The mountain range rolled up like waves in my hand, and it turned out to be just a low dot level spell. The eastern emperor smiled but remained silent, pulling down countless stars like flying rain into the sky. Under Chi Yu's two fists, the shattered star will become a reality underneath the underworld, hidden currents surge, and the sky will tilt. The legendary characters, the gods and demons in the Yunmengs, from the Kunlun Temple to the 90.9th level of the sky. Everyone is watching the resurrection of the soldier master Chi Yu, and in the human world, Chi Ling, who has just become the owner of the 10,000 Demons Pavilion, also sees the opportunity that the Chi family has been waiting for for thousands of years. This has been the case throughout history, and I must do the same. Also known as, the redemption of De Wu Zhu, what should I do if I accidentally become a god, I am the demon emperor and the divine king of rebirth, enduring humiliation for thousands of years, oh. You blush. Keywords of the novel. Wan Yao Guan. Shan Hai Pian No Pop-Ups, Wan Yao Guan. Shan Hai Pian TXT Complete Collection Download, Wan Yao Guan. Shan Hai Pian Latest Chapter Reading. Chapter 1 Lushu Chapter A Confused Lushu You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio Chapter 1 Lushu Chapter A Confused Lushu in 2023, Anchi City, Wanyao Hall When bidding farewell to the evening breeze at dusk, just as the night falls, the spirit breath of the Ten Thousand Demons Hall can be detected by the monsters. The night gradually darkened, and there was still no intention of anyone coming. The West Lake Longjing in the purple clay pot is cool and refreshing. Qi Ling finally asked. Chong Ming, are there no guests today? I want to sleep now. Chong Ming has recently fallen in love with wearing floral shirts, growing a delicate mustache. Although he doesn't smoke, he always puts a piece on his ear. It seems like such a mature and reliable man. Although Chong Ming's age may have exceeded the history of Chinese civilization. Putting down the book in his hand, Chong Ming lazily replied. There is one, I only heard that it comes from Mount Chuyang, but I don't know about the others, brother. It's only been two or three hours, and I want to be lazy. Qi Ling didn't want to argue with this monster, who may be even older than himself and his ancestors combined, after all, the truth in Chong Ming's mouth can be said for several days and nights. After silently pursuing the drama for a while, Qi Ling lifted her delicate eyes and saw that the incense burner needed to be refilled with incense. Standing up and stretching his body slightly, Qi Ling put away his tablet and tea set and said to Chong Ming. You can close the door now, old man. Chong Ming pushed the frame of the mirror and said helplessly. Okay, okay. Go upstairs and rest, my aunt. It must be admitted that even wearing a ruffian floral shirt, Chong Ming still appears very handsome, even with some elegance. The sword eyebrows and starry eyes are paired with fair skin like a girl, but they also have sexy collarbones and thick shoulders. If it were in school, it would attract countless young fans, and it is not impossible to attract talent scouts to debut directly. Moreover, Chong Ming's clothes and people are always spotless, and even when Qi Ling wakes up on weekends without makeup, seeing this exquisite man can make him feel a bit ashamed. He is indeed a fairy. Although living in the same room as such a stunning man, for Qi Ling, after all, he was an old man who watched him grow up, and their relationship was very natural. Qi Ling put his hands on his hips and roast. She's still an eighteen-year-old girl, so don't call me, auntie, at your age, okay? Age is what Chong Ming hates the most about humans, even in the 21st century, oh, it turns out that when human women reach the age of 18, they won't grow up anymore. Do you remember when you first started college, but you were very shy and snuggled up in my arms, saying, no, it's so scary to be so far away from home? Chi Ling's face turned red and she shyly patted Chong Ming's back, saying, I'm ignoring you. Let's talk, then I ran up to the bedroom on the second floor and said, hee hee. Now you can play to your heart's content, old dot fashioned antiques. Boring dead wood. After graduating from university, Qi Ling originally wanted to go to Jianghai City for development, 
but her father had to come back and take over the family business no matter what. She had long been tired of hearing those mythological stories and the millennium mission of the Qi family. Qi Ling is not an atheist, after all, there is only one in his family. When I was a child, I encountered many demons and monsters, but when I thought of the saying that carries destiny and saves all beings, I still felt a bit resistant. She was born in the millennium. According to my father, on the day of my birth, five phoenixes hovered over the ten thousand demons hall, two white dragons came to give gifts, and monsters of all sizes came to congratulate me. But Qi Ling believed that it was only because of their relationship with their father, not because they were a chosen person. Ling Er, our Qi family has been passed down from generation to generation as boys, but when it comes to you, you are actually a girl. My father should have told you that it is a goddess who bestows our Qi family's magic and magic. What do you mean? Dad, are you saying I'm the reincarnation of that goddess? It's not that, but you're going to rescue that goddess, only you can. Sleeping slot. Isn't this gender kidnapping? Three months ago, Qi Ling's father Qi Chen disappeared and there has been no news to this day. But this kind of thing often happened to her when she was young, and Chong Ming said she didn't need to worry, so she didn't think much about it. After all, during Qi Chen's absence, no one can restrain themselves anymore. They can eat whatever they want and sleep as long as they want, while Chong Ming only reads books and occasionally goes out to do personal things. This kind of life is simply not too enjoyable. At this moment, Chong Ming was about to get up and close the door when he saw a timid young girl standing in front of the door. The girl was dressed in a blue hanfu with a curved train, carrying something wrapped in high dot quality silk on her back. It looked like a chin. Her voice sounded somewhat foolish and dull. Hello, sorry to bother you. I'm Lu Xu. Is this the Wanyao Hall? I'm really sorry, I got lost. The apparent level of the aura emanating from this ten thousand demons hall is like that of a male cat in heat, which can lead to getting lost and leaving Chong Ming speechless. He straightened his silver eyes and slightly leaned down to answer. Exactly, what can I do for you if I don't agree? The sudden seriousness left Lu Xu at a loss. Excuse me, are you the owner of the museum? Chong Ming slightly raised the corner of his mouth and then shouted to the upstairs like a different person. Stupid girl, come down quickly. The guests are here. After shouting a few times, there was still no movement. Chong Ming changed his tone and said. Mr. Chi Chen, where did you work this time? Dudu Dudu. Chi Ling almost ran down from the second floor in a rolling manner. She put on her coat while running and didn't forget to comb her hair. Chong Ming leaned against the door frame and whistled, saying. Noah, hurry up and let someone come in, okay? Dad, I was just learning English. Hey. It's impolite, may I ask who you are, girl? Lu Xu covered his mouth and chuckled, saying. Lu Xu, just call me, little dear, dot. When Qi Ling passed by Chong Ming's side, he pinched his forearm hard and smiled brightly. I'm Qi Ling, just call me Sister Linger. Miss Xiaolu, what can I do for you to help with the Wanyao Hall? Lu Xu's appearance only looked like a 15 or 16 year old girl, so Qi Ling instinctively believed that she was much more mature than the little girl in front of her, and her tone had a hint of having an older sister present. Lu Xu scratched his head and said, I want to find someone. Qi Ling took Lu Xu to the reception hall, brewed a pot of Long Jing, and said calmly. So, who are you looking for? The owner of this Qin is the reincarnated young master Xiao Bai. Wait a moment, is the young master Xiao Bai mentioned by Miss Xiaolu the first ruler of the spring and autumn period, Duke Quan of Qi and Jiang Xiao Bai? MMM -hmm. Excited. My current mood is excitement. Qi Ling has seen countless wealth rushing towards him. Both men and women have a dragon living in their hearts that wants to accumulate wealth. Remembering the guests received by the Ten Thousand Demons Hall before, they either wandered around the world or lived in seclusion. 
Although there were powerful ghost kings and rare monsters occupying a place, they were all very poor. Although the compensation demanded by the Ten Thousand Demons Hall has always been for demonic power, demonic power cannot be used as a meal in modern society. If one can obtain some pots and jars from Duke Chihang, even if they are dilapidated, they can immediately achieve financial freedom. After coughing lightly twice, Qi Ling gave a glance to Chongming, indicating that he had come to live a big life. He asked calmly on the surface. Miss Xiaolu, finding someone also requires some clues. Do you have any personal items of Duke Qi Heng on you? Lu Xu untied the package behind him, inside was a grand and grand ancient qin. This qin, called Hao Zhong, has been with Xiao Bai for many years. Number Clock The bell that is the top of the ten Gu Qin instruments. Are you afraid that you won't be able to get some bottles and cans of such a priceless treasure that you can see? But as a joyful person, Qi Ling didn't want to miss any gossip. Something must have happened between Lu Xu and Duke Heng of Qi, so she said to Lu Xu. Miss Xiaolu, how can I believe that this is the trumpet bell owned by Duke Qi Heng? Chong Ming, the man, couldn't understand the atmosphere and suddenly interrupted. The name of this qin is Hao Zhong. When I was young, I had the privilege of listening to Emperor Fuxi play this qin. I didn't expect to see it again here today. Perhaps the bell awakened the beautiful memories of Chongming, and I saw this man staring at Qin, not knowing what he was thinking. At this point, Lu Xu said. I don't know how to prove it, but the number clock told me. Xiao Bai has returned. Things have become permeating. Qi Ling has seen many kinds of demons and monsters, but this refined object is still the first. Are you saying that this Qin can speak? No. Half a month ago, when I just woke up, the bell suddenly sounded a melody. It was the last piece played by Xiao Bai for me that year. Although I had been asleep for nearly three thousand years, I never forgot it. Putting on hot tea, Qi Ling propped up her head with both hands and stared intently at Lu Xu, saying. Can you tell the story between you and him? Following the memories of Lu Xu, their thoughts reached 698 BC. Qilin Mountain Xiao Bai, what makes you unhappy? Aren't you happy playing with Ah Lu? The girl is chasing butterflies, with a cute and bouncing figure. There are some things that Xiao Bai never wants her to know. My elder brother, Zhu Er, is known for being cruel and lustful, cruel and selfish. Is it not like a child's play for Father Wang to insist on handing over this vast qi state to him? But this negative emotion, Xiao Bai is unwilling to confide in the girl she admires. Ah Lu, can there be anything you like in the world? Yes, Lu's favorite is Xiao Bai. The girl nodded at the boy's nose, and their foreheads were almost touching each other Xiao Bai didn't dodge. He grabbed Lu Xu's hand and smiled, saying. What about Xiao Bai? Lu Xu's eyes twitched slightly, and after a moment of contemplation, he said. When I was practicing at Mount Shuiyang, I once sang for Fuxi Shanghuang. The sound of Fuxi Shanghuang's qin has always been unforgettable to me. Since then, I have always wanted a qin that belongs to me. Xiao Bai smiled heartily and covered his stomach, saying. Ha ha ha. What kind of Fuxi? It's like you've lived for thousands of years. Damn it, Xiao Bai is the worst. Lu Xu turned his face away, his whole body full of anger. Xiao Bai placed his hand on her shoulder and said. If I meet the best Qin in the world, I will definitely send it to you. Really, really. If I break my promise, I will be alone and die of illness on my bed. Lu Xu quickly covered his mouth, and the fragrance of the girl's hair entered his nose. Stop talking. Alu just wants you to be okay. The joyful time flowed quickly, and girls and teenagers once thought that life was just like that. But the good times did not last long. Since Jiang Xiaobai's brother Jiang Zhu Er ascended to the throne, he has been acting in reverse, indulging in debauchery and pleasure. The people of Qi have been filled with complaints, making it difficult for them to make a living. 
In order to make up for the mistakes made by his elder brother to the people, Jiang Xiaobai runs day and night among the people. As time goes on, the number of times I see Lu Xu decreases. Lu Xu said to him countless times. Xiao Bai, why don't you come with me back to Mount Juyang? As the Prince of Qi, the last hope of the people, Xiao Bai cannot let go of his responsibility to the people, and he also does not allow himself to lie to Lu Xu anymore. After personally carving a qin and giving it to Lu Xu, Xiao Bai decided not to go to Qilin Mountain again. Escape, shameful but effective. Time flies, ten years later, Qilin Mountain. The accumulation of public grievances is getting deeper and deeper. Bao Shia told him that his brother, the current king of Qi Xiang, could no longer accommodate him. Obtaining a greater reputation than a monarch is a major taboo. He and Bao Shuya are in exile in another country, so he won't be able to come back for a while. With this in mind, after many years, Jiang Xiaobai came to Qilin Mountain again. After years of interaction, Xiaobai knew that Lu Xu was not an ordinary person, but when he saw that her appearance remained unchanged, he was still secretly surprised. Why, have you decided to go back to Mount Zhuyang with me? The girl no longer pursued butterflies, but silently played the piano without lifting her head. Ah Lu, your piano skills are becoming more and more exquisite. I'm leaving the state of Qi, so hurry up and leave. It's not safe here anymore. There are drops of water falling on the strings, making a strange and sorrowful sound. Xiao Bai, I'll wait for you to come back. You can leave. Xiao Bai wanted to persuade her again, but the danger in people's hearts was beyond her foresight. Bao Shuya walked over. The loyal man didn't speak and directly picked up the white man and walked towards the carriage. The sound of the rear pursuers shouting and killing was close to my ears. Almost in an instant, tens of thousands of arrows shot, and Lu Xu waved the strings of the qin, covering the carriage with a layer of sound shield. Ah Lu! Bao Shuya, let go of me! Ah Lu! Let go, Ah Lu! The girl stood up and turned her back to the young man, who had transformed into a graceful, light and dreamy blue deer. Little white, don't come back again, she said, monster. It's a monster. That monster is running over there. Hurry up. Kill it, kill it. General, general, general. This monster is stopping our pursuit, it's with the young master Xiao Bai. Guan Zhong pulled his bow full and snorted coldly. Today, not a single one can run away. Two years later, at the Qi King's palace. Being reckless, Gong Sun is ignorant. Even a dog servant dares to point a sword at me. After killing the double on the bed, Gong Sun Ignorant discovered the ruler disguised as a servant. He laughed wildly, and the laughter spread from inside the palace to the palace gate, causing everyone in the Qi palace to laugh. Jiang Zhuer, do you still think you are the king of Qi? Ha ha ha, look around you, whether it's in the palace or in the harem, who is not my ignorant Gong Sun? The sharp blade fiercely pierced into Jiang Zhuer's abdomen, inserted, pulled out. Repeatedly. After killing his lord, Gong Sun ignorant and proclaimed himself king. For a moment, doubts arose everywhere. The people suddenly woke up in shock. The so dot called killing of a foolish ruler is nothing more than a traitor for one's own selfish desires. At the same time, on the street corner, without the constraints of etiquette and law, the rebellious soldiers also exposed their ugly desires in their hearts. Those people and things that must be protected on weekdays will not be punished no matter how they are wasted now. The cries of children and the screams of women kept coming and going. Xiao Bai. Xiao Bai. Where are you? Lu Xu was unable to find Xiao Bai in the city. Last time, in order to stop Guan Zhong's team, she almost exhausted her demonic power and was hit by Guan Zhong's two arrows just in the thigh. It was not until escaping to a hidden cave at the foot of the cliff that I was able to shake off my pursuers and have been asleep ever since. Great, he hasn't come back. 
the sharp cries of a woman not far away caught the attention of Lu Xu. A civilian woman was being bullied by rebellious soldiers because her brother had worked as a stable for Jiang Zhuer. The soldier pushed the woman over, tore her clothes apart, and cursed loudly, Bitch, you like to serve that foolish ruler. Come and serve me too. The helpless sobs of the woman made the soldiers watching even more excited, panting heavily, and their expressions were no different from those of a passionate animal. Sitting on the land of Lushu, playing the piano and singing a moving folk song. The song sounded as if it had magic, and in an instant, the crowd quieted down, and everyone's expressions became very peaceful. Lu Xu's singing can soothe people's resentment, which is her unique ability that even Fu Xi was surprised by. After the singing, she thought people would reconcile as before. But everyone looked at the girl in front of them in horror, including the woman. Monster, witch. She's a monster. Kill her. Quickly, kill her. I, I remember. She was the monster in Chilin Mountain two years ago. We can't let her go this time. Faced with an inexplicably angry crowd, Lu Xu didn't understand why the people who had hurt each other just now became so united in an instant. Perhaps this is the reason why humans can rule the world. She panicked and had no choice but to flee around, but in the end, she stumbled and managed to hide in Chilin Mountain. The sound of insults and arrow rain kept coming, with arrows cutting through clothes and skin, and flames eroding the lush mountains and forests. Chilin Mountain can no longer accommodate itself. As the butterflies burned themselves in the flames, Lu Xu knew she had nowhere to go. Kneeling to the ground, tears blurred my vision. Why? Didn't Xiao Bai say that everyone is easy to get along with? The screams of fear and blindness are getting closer and closer each time. Lu Xu looked down at the cliff below, as if there was some redemption there. Jumping down could make up for the mistakes she had never made. I have always believed that experience is the foundation of creation, and I hope readers can share some folk stories with me, interesting insights, and thank you very much asterisk, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 Lu Xu Chapter 2 Gradually Losing the Original Intention You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Lu Xu Chapter 2 Gradually Losing the Original Intention in 685 BC, in the state of Ju, within the Jiangbian Pavilion. Being in a foreign land, whenever I drink alone with the river, the feeling of loneliness is always difficult to express. Only playing the piano can make Jiang Xiaobai feel more at ease, as if returning to the time when the boy and Lu Xu were playing together in the sound of the piano. Someone was riding a horse not far away. The sound of horse hooves is urgent. The person who came here is the Duke of Ju, who has tasted it. He had a smile on his face and hooked onto Xiao Bai's shoulder, saying, Xiao Bai, you know that Gong Sun is ignorant and dead, and all the lords are waiting for you to regain control of the court. Xiao Bai stood up suddenly, unaware that the piano on his knee had fallen to the ground. Taste it yourself, take this statement seriously. It is well known that Gong Sun, who was ignorant, went to Yonglin to play and was killed by Yonglin. The two were speaking when Bao Shuya arrived with a carriage. This time, without anyone urging, Xiao Bai walked quickly towards the carriage. Suddenly, he turned around and saluted, saying, Having taken refuge for many years, you and I are brothers and sisters. If the state of Jew encounters difficulties in the future, we will not disappoint today's kindness. The carriage walked very fast, as bumpy as when it came back, but not in such a hurry. After returning to his home country, Jiang Xiaobai ascended to the throne as king, known as Duke Heng of Qi in history. He worked hard to overcome past grievances, appointed talented individuals, and quickly facilitated the prosperity of the Yin country. Everything was moving towards the good side, and one day, Duke Qi Hengong summoned the Prime Minister alone. Bao Shuya, do you remember the girl from Chilin Mountain? The old minister has a good impression that the king has been friendly with him since childhood. Find her for the lone king, and I will make her my queen. Bao Shuya was somewhat surprised. 
how could a witch marry into the palace? Even if the courtiers advise, the king will still do such a thing. It's just that Bao Shuya understands that all of this is impossible. He had known that the king would ask about the girl, so as soon as he returned to his home country, he sent someone to inquire. Your Majesty, Chilin Mountain was burned down not long ago. The old minister heard that the girl had jumped off a cliff and committed suicide. After finding out the cause of the situation, Xiao Bai did not blame anyone, but felt it was not worth it for himself and Lu Xu. From then on, Xiao Bai's heart was missing a piece. Later on, every year, Xiao Bai would go on a tour in humble clothes, go to Qilin Mountain alone to worship Lu Xu, and play the piano alone by the cliff until dusk. But today it's a bit different. He heard passers-by say. Have you heard about Qingyin village? There is a beggar holding a peerless and excellent Qin, what a waste. A peerless and excellent Qin. The best Qin in the world. That was a gift I promised her when I was young. Arriving at the entrance of the village, the noisy and piercing sound of the Qin came towards her. Jiang Xiaobai chuckled inwardly, indeed, it's a waste of things. Upon approaching, it was discovered that it was a child who was very handsome, making it difficult to distinguish between a boy and a girl. This child's clothes are very old, but the piano in his arms is very bright. The black body of the chin is very elegant, and its sound is as loud as the sound of a bell. Xiao Bai put a hundred Qi state knife coins into the bowl in front of the child. The unpleasant sound of the piano stopped. Thank you. But that's too much. My song isn't worth that much money. Xiao Bai leaned down and touched the chin, saying with a smile, it doesn't matter. If you are willing to give me this chin, I can exchange it for a thousand pieces of gold. The child hugged the piano tightly. No, no, this is what my father left behind. Lu Xu is no longer by his side, what if he takes someone else's chin? So, are you willing to be my musician? You don't have to be bullied anymore. The child thought for a moment and suddenly nodded. Can this chin have a name? The child shook his head in a daze and said, no. How about calling it the number clock? The child nodded again. In the following years, the child continued to hone his skills in the Qi King's palace. Only when he went to pay respects to Lu Xu, did Xiao Bai meet the child. Time flies, and many more years have passed. Qi Wang Palace This attack on Lu is imperative, do not discuss it again. The advice of the courtiers made Xiao Bai dislike it very much. War does indeed cost people and money, but the arrow is on the string and has to be fired. Walking in the military camp, a sound of qin, horns, bells and drums sounded, and the spirit was steep and long upon hearing it, making people feel like they were rubbing their hands. Xiao Bai picked up the guard's horn and blew it, making two draws, which was even more inspiring. The faces of the soldiers all showed a joyful expression. The country's affairs are busy, and without realizing it, the children of the past have become so skilled in playing the piano. The next day, inspired by the sound of the trumpet, a hundred thousand strong army was unstoppable and defeated the enemy like a bamboo pole. In no time, the Qi army achieved a complete victory. But the Duke Qi of Lu Zhuang, fearless of death, forced her with her own life on the earthen platform. The sharp blade pressed against Jiang Xiaobai's throat and his face remained unchanged, still wanting to fight to the death. But the song of Lu Xu spread from his own camp, and everyone present was lost in thought. The two countries signed a peace treaty on this and will not violate each other. After returning to the military camp, Xiaobai looked at the girl in front of him. Although she was wearing men's clothes, her appearance and demeanor became more and more like the one in her memory. It's just that time is too far away, he can't believe it. Your piano skills have reached a perfect level, and you no longer need to be confined to the state of qi. You should go to higher places to hone your skills. I just want to stay here. Now that he has lost his original intention, just seeing this girl, those beautiful memories surge into his heart, causing him great heartache. 
There are a hundred pieces of gold here, enough for you to settle down and leave the bell behind. Go away. I'm not leaving. In the state of Qi, what the lone king wants is what he wants. Then play a song for me and I'll leave after listening. Isn't this just a prank? How could the lord of a country give you a poor girl to play the piano? Thinking this way, one song has already been played. He drove away the girl and touched the bell in his arms, but he couldn't feel any joy. Later on, Jiang Xiaobai did many things that he considered terrifying when he was young. In order to make Qi truly powerful and prosperous, he implemented a system of military and political integration and military civilian integration. At one point, he used the banner of respecting the king and repelling the barbarians to unite the feudal lords, quell the internal turmoil of the Song dynasty, attack the Shanrong in the north, attack the Chu state in the south, and annihilate small states such as Tan, Sui, and Zhang. The feudal lords became increasingly afraid of him, and the reverence of their courtiers was gradually consumed by fear. Even the Zhou emperor obeyed him and dared not disobey his wishes. Jiang Xiaobai eventually became the hegemon of a generation. In his later years, lying on the sickbed, he knew that his time was running out. After explaining the future, he drove out all his courtiers and waited quietly for death. However, the accumulated illnesses over the years made him unable to turn over due to the pain, to the point where it was so difficult for him to pick up his glass before waking up. A few children were vying for power and profit, but not a single one was in front of them. In these days, his health has been getting worse and worse, not only can't eat anything, but his personality has also become very strange. Amidst a bitter smile, a folk song suddenly spread, and tears welled up in the old man's eyes. This song is hers. He closed his eyes regretfully and looked back on the rest of his life. What did he really gain? Opening his eyes again, Lu Xu came to him, as young, lively, and beautiful as he remembered. Xiao Bai's lips trembled violently, but he couldn't say a word. Lu Xu touched his forehead and asked Xiao Bai, Are you willing to go back to Mount Zhuyang with me? As if he had also returned to his youth, Xiao Bai nodded vigorously and burst into tears in Lu Xu's arms. His hand trembled as he pointed towards the clock hanging on the wall. Ah Lu, I can't believe it, I can't believe it's you. After telling his story, Lu Xu's eyes became slightly moist, but after a few seconds, they transformed into a cheerful smile. Qi Ling's tone was very gentle. That child, is that you? Lu Xu clasped his hands and said. I once met the great deity Fuxi, who gave me the ability to be reborn. So after jumping off a cliff that day, I was reborn as a child and lost all my memories. That clock. It is also a gift from the great deity Fuxi. The trumpet bell will accompany my rebirth, and when I can proficiently play it, my memory and magic will come back. Qi Ling was somewhat envious, despite living so long, he still had two lives left. There is just one more doubt. Miss Xiaolu, for thousands of years, the young master Xiao Bai has reincarnated multiple times. Why did you come to find him this time? Lu Xu lifted her hair behind her head and gently stroked the bell, saying. After Xiao Bai's death, I didn't want to believe he had left me, so I stayed in the house where I had practiced the piano in the Qi King's palace. Every time I played the piano, I felt that Xiao Bai was still there. Three months later, Wu Gui, who had just ascended to the throne, was killed by someone. I don't want to see Xiao Bai's descendants brutally slaughtered, so. Chong Ming said coldly. So you strip yourself of your fur and give it to the innocent descendants to bless them with peace and health, right? Mr. Chong Ming, how do you know? Someone really does this kind of self-moving old bridge section. Lu Xu was a bit angry, and her tearful expression was very endearing. She said coquettishly. It's not about being self-moved, those children have really survived. Seeing that Chong Ming was going to offend a major client, Qi Ling quickly dissuaded him. Chong Ming. What nonsense are you talking about? What a cold-blooded man. 
Cheng Ming was about to defend himself, but he saw Qi Ling's gesture of extending three fingers. This girl's conditions are not bad. Cheng Ming bowed slightly and said. Sorry, it was unintentional. Please don't mind. Lu Xu's mood calmed down a bit and continued to say. After losing my fur, I fell into a deep sleep and only woke up recently. It's a bit eerie. Qi Ling asked in confusion. For thousands of years, it has been the innocent descendants silently protecting you. Chong Ming answered. Obviously not, human greed cannot be suppressed for thousands of years, and the fur of the Lu Xu girl is not lacking now. There were some things that Lu Xu didn't want to mention. She vaguely remembered those people throwing their weak selves into the wilderness. As for who saved herself, she couldn't remember anymore. Since everything was explained clearly, Qi Ling knew that she could start work. She used terminology and the 10,000 Demons Manual appeared within herself. Since his father ran away from home a few months ago, Qi Ling has become the new owner of the 10,000 Demons Pavilion. And the demonic power passed down from generation to generation by the Qi family resides in the 10,000 Demons Manual, which can only be used by the owner of the 10,000 Demons Pavilion. Miss Xiaolu, we will find the young master Xiao Bai for you, but in the world, there is no gain without effort. Lu Xu did not ask about the conditions of the 10,000 Demons Hall, so he placed his hand directly on the 10,000 Demons Manual, and the spiritual thread depicted the appearance of Lu Xu's body. I know your rules, and my body is full of demonic power, so the owner can take it anywhere. Qi Ling really didn't want to bully such a naive and foolish girl, and awkwardly smiled, saying. Wherever you say it, only 30% of the demon power is needed. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Lu Xu Chapter 3 Lower World Visitors You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Lu Xu Chapter 3 Lower World Visitors Everyone in the world has Qi, which is essentially the external form of the soul. When a person establishes a deep connection with an object, their soul's breath will come into contact with that object. Until the next owner of this object changes its aura. Therefore, as one of the last items used by Duke Qi Heng before his lifetime, the bell must be stained with his soul breath. Qi Ling crossed her hands, her index fingers intertwined, and her eyes slightly closed. Searching for information. The fourth of the thirteen secret techniques of the Ten Thousand Demons Hall is to search for breath. Even if a person has gone through a hundred reincarnations, as long as their three souls and seven souls remain unchanged, they can find their true essence through the residual soul breath of a person. The effect is unparalleled compared to Erlang Shen's Shaotian dog. After a moment, the body of the trumpet glowed with a faint blue light, revealing sixteen veins connected by lines. The star map presented the shape of a scorpion. There is a man and a woman on the star chart, and the woman is the deer in front of us, so the man is self.evident. A line compiled by soul breath points to one side of Lu Xu, while the other leads to the outside. Lu Xu was a bit at a loss. For some reason, as a monster, she couldn't see her soul and could only ask. Master, does that faint breath point to Xiao Bai's reincarnation? Qi Ling's left index and middle fingers intersected, and fine sweat began to seep out. He replied. I'm not sure, I didn't perceive a living person at the point where Qi Hengong's soul breath was pointing. Chong Ming was very considerate and wiped the sweat off Qi Ling's forehead with a handkerchief in his arms. At this moment, a sound of birds came from the air, and two pupils appeared in Chong Ming's eyes. He smiled slightly and said. I see. Without the power of double pupils, I didn't notice either. Qi Ling asked Chong Ming in confusion. What does it mean? Duke Qi Heng has not been reincarnated. Qi Ling Jiao's body was taken aback for a moment, and she put away her technique. This is really amazing. It doesn't take any effort to get it. I'll go and come back as soon as I go. Lu Xu asked puzzled, Master, Mr. Chong Ming, what are you talking about? There are no living people. 
Little Bai has not been reincarnated. Qi Ling ignored the answer and ran out as if flying. Chong Ming picked up a cup of coffee, elegantly crossed his legs, and looked at Lu Xu, saying. Miss Lu Xu, don't worry. Our owner, although not a lady, has always been quite reliable. Mr. Chong Ming, is this really? Lu Xu gently caressed the Qin in his arms, realizing that he was even more convinced when he saw strands of golden light lingering around. Miss Lu Xu, have you ever seen ghosts and monsters on your way here? Mr. Chong Ming, stop laughing anymore. What kind of ghosts are there in this world? It seems that this silly and sweet person has received unparalleled protection without realizing it. There were some things that he couldn't just say, so he insinuated and said, Miss Lu Xu, perhaps when you wake up, the sound of the seed doesn't notify you. What if I say, the person you're looking for is always by your side? The time goes back to 643 BC. At midnight, the sound of mourning and pain echoed throughout the entire Qi Palace. Father, you went today. What should the child do? Father. Master Wuxia, let us mourn and comply. The King of Qi has passed away, and everything depends on you to oversee the overall situation. Looking at the farce in front of him, Xiao Bai suddenly felt that people are so sad. He wasted his life for fame and fortune, and in the end, it was just a handful of yellow soil. This life has been full of deceit and deceit, and now it seems like a joke. Has the initial goal been lost during the process? Looking at his wrinkle-free hands, he was very surprised. He heard that when a person dies, he always thinks about the appearance he wants to return to, and then he will return to the state of that age. This rumor is actually true, where is Ah Lu? Passing through the crying crowd on the ground, Xiao Bai realized that he was already a soul. He cannot touch anyone, and even mortals cannot see him. A gloomy voice came from behind. Duke Qi Heng, in memory of your rich achievements during your lifetime, Emperor Taiyi bestowed upon you the title of the first hall of the Yenluo king in the lower realm, and from then on, you will never grow old. Hurry up and follow the old woman. Suddenly, it was pitch black all around. Xiao Bai turned around and saw only an old woman in white clothes, leaning on a cane and stumbling towards her. You, who are you? The old woman sneered and lifted her veil, revealing her wrinkled face. The old woman is the first soul summoner in the underworld. Suenio. Accompanied by a sizzling sound, the Xian bird's nails grew rapidly. You are the last task of an old woman on earth, don't procrastinate anymore. Having seen too many bloody scenes in his life, Xiao Bai is not afraid of the ghosts in front of him, but he still doesn't want to leave. Ah Lu, may I see Ah Lu once? The black smoke enveloped Suanio's entire body, and when Suanio walked up to Xiao Bai, she turned into a sexy beauty with a perfect figure and a protruding front and a raised back. Who is that? Duke Qi Heng, are you willing to leave with me now? Suanio leaned close to Xiao Bai's body, and the black smoke was about to engulf the two. Looking around, besides darkness, there is still darkness. Don't touch the lone king. At this moment, a folk song came. It's the voice of Lu Xu. Xiao Bai immediately ran towards the singing place. Seeing the retirement plan about to go bankrupt, Suanio tightly held on to Xiao Bai's arm. Duke Qi Heng, if we move forward any further, I won't be polite. Please do as you please. Enduring the excruciating pain of soul and body separation, Xiao Bai rushed out of the darkness, while Lu Xu was lamenting for himself in the house where he had practiced the piano in the past. But Xiao Bai's breath is too weak now, so he has to rely on the bell first. Suanio looked at the broken arm in his hand and thought of a person who would be as brave as Duke Qi Heng. Damn it, why do you feel so uncomfortable getting close to that girl? It's that Qin. Interesting, I see how long you can stay by her side. In the bell, Xiao Bai rested well and ultimately did not end up with a desperate fate. But when he woke up again, he saw the body of Lu Xu, which had lost its fur. 
in 2023, on the street corner. Chi Ling roughly understood that without using the soul gathering spell when Lu Xu was by his side, even if Chi Ling could see Yin and Yang from a young age, he could not see Jiang Xiaobai. This indicates that his soul breath is extremely weak. After applying the Gathering God technique to himself, Qi Ling quickly discovered the target. Hu Hu! Finally found you, Jiang Xiaobai. Ah, calling out the name of the Lone King, you are still the first one. Qi Ling kicked the garbage bin on the roadside and said to Jiang Xiaobai sitting on it. I thought that thousands of years of being a bodyguard had already worn away your aristocratic flaws. Ha ha ha, what does it have to do with you? Don't go see them. At the moment when Qi Ling used the search for breath, Jiang Xiaobai left the number clock. Well, I am destined not to be with Ah Lu. She cannot hear or see me. Miss, please bid farewell to Ah Lu on my behalf. Want to leave for a while? How could it be so easy? Qi Ling took advantage of Jiang Xiaobai's speech and held down his shoulder with one hand while patting the wall with the other. A picture of Yin and Yang fish instantly appeared on the wall. Two people, it should be said that two ghosts have emerged from inside. Jie 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 little master, finally have the opportunity for my two brothers to repay their relationship. Two ghosts, one black and one white, the black ghost is soft and evil, and the white ghost is gentle and elegant. They all say in unison. The third soul guiding envoy in the lower realm, Fan Wujiu, Xie Bian. Fan Wujiu, it's better to share the story. A chain blade has already flown towards Jiang Xiaobai on the side. Xie Bian's smile was originally calm and composed, but after recognizing it as Duke Heng of Qi, he punched his good brother Fan Wujiu and flew more than twenty meters away. He arched his hand and bowed, saying, Your Highness Qin Guangwang, have you finally remembered taking office? Grandma Qingyao often mentioned you to us when she resigned. Qi Ling roast. Good guy, I asked you to help me tie him up, not for you to recognize my boss. Jiang Xiaobai was taken aback. I have never been to the underworld, how can I call myself the king of Qin Guang? Your position is bestowed upon you by the crown prince Tai Yi, and no one dares to take up the position except you, because you are a major client who has not been resolved yet. Grandma Qingyao secretly visits you every hundred years. At this moment, Fan Wujiu had just climbed up and gasped for breath, shouting. I lost it. Big brother, you took the wrong medicine. Why are you hitting me? Shut up. Be reckless. Another heavy punch. Xie Bian was dragging Fan Wujiu, who was confused, to run away. Master, we will repay your favor next time. Alas, outsiders are ultimately unreliable. Qi Ling gathered her strength in her hand and was about to take action when Jiang Xiaobai shook her hand and said. The Lone King knows that he is not your opponent, let's lead the way. Wan Yao Guan. Chong Ming has tried his best to hint at Lu Xu, but Lu Xu still doesn't understand anything. Dong Dong Dong. Knocking on the door. Chong Ming smiled and glanced at Lu Xu, who immediately ran to open the door. Master, why haven't you seen the novice? Don't worry, let me in first. The reason why Lu Xu couldn't see his soul body was probably because he had come into contact with the great god Fushi. What kind of person is Fushi? The strength of Yang energy is comparable to that of rivers and seas. Being with Fushi for a period of time can ward off evil and increase positive energy. Qi Ling took out a soul summoning banner from the drawer at the counter and covered Jiang Xiaobai under the umbrella. Miss Xiaolu, during the years he has been by your side, he has been burned by the purest Yang energy in the world every day. If it weren't for the presence of a trumpet, he would have been extinguished. Lu Xu looked incredulously at Jiang Xiaobai's gradually emerging figure and burst into tears. How could it be, Xiaobai? How could it be? Jiang Xiaobai smiled very gently. Alu, when you wake up, you'll be fine. 
Lu Xu rushed towards Jiang Xiaobai's arms, and the two hugged tightly. The burnt mist sprouted from Jiang Xiaobai's body. Seeing such a situation, Lu Xu quickly let go, but he hugged her even tighter. Ah Lu, driving you away that day was not my original intention. I know. At this moment, Qi Ling opened the Ten Thousand Demons manual and said. Miss Xiaolu, I now know why Suanio has been letting Heng Gong go unchecked. It is estimated that she will appear soon, and everything needs to be exchanged. We can resist Suanio for you, or let you two never separate again, but the cost is Fuxi's breath. Lu Xu is a bit confused, what blue bird? What Fuxi aura? Xiao Bai is right in front of me now, how could he not see it? Seeing Lu Xu so stunned, Chong Ming could only say clearly. Fuxi's aura is the reason why you can't see him or burn him, and this soul summoning banner is a disposable item, which means it's gone once used. It was used by Xie Bian to offset the debt. Lu Xu decisively replied. I am willing to surrender the breath of Fuxi. Qi Ling eagerly opened the Hundred Demons manual and pressed his thumbs and index fingers against each other, saying. Miss Xiaolu, please place your hand on your portrait. The next second Lu Xu placed his finger on it, a golden true energy was transmitted from within to the Ten Thousand Demons manual. This is really a useless deal. Qi Ling did almost nothing, this unscrupulous businessman is so happy. The breath of Fuxi, the great god, contains energy that can even strengthen all of Qi Ling's spells. Jiang Xiaobai's outline was completely clear in Lu Xu's eyes. Xiao Bai, I didn't know I would hurt you so deeply. Ah Lu, there is a word that I wanted to tell you 2720.1 years ago. Chong Ming coughed lightly twice and pulled Qi Ling around. Lu Xu tilted his head and said. What? Would you and I go back to Mount Zhuyang together? Lu Xu's face turned red like a ripe persimmon, and he gently said. Okay. The shy smile of the girl appeared so beautiful in the man's arms. Suddenly, a gust of dark wind blew in, and a thick black mist spread around. This voice is very familiar. He he he, thank you very much, the owner. There's nothing we can do to protect this kid now. Suanio walked straight towards Jiang Xiaobai, grabbed his collar, and tearfully complained. Do you know? Because of you, I retired three hundred years late. Three hundred years. Qi Ling rounded off the field and said. Suanio got his sister, isn't there still Jiang Yun? Don't let her continue to act as an agent. Suanio stuttered and said. What Jiang Yun, appointing Qin Guangwang is the command of Tai Shangshan. Qi Ling picked up Suanio's white hair and wrapped it around her index finger, approaching her ear and saying. The emperors of the upper realm have long fallen asleep. Sister, don't seek revenge too publicly. Fortunately, Jiang Yun is an honest person and has never petitioned. For over two thousand years, Qin Yao has no hatred towards Jiang Xiaobai, it's just a kind of obsession. Moreover, he cut off one of his hands and came to see him every hundred years to see if Jiang Xiaobai had disappeared. That's not possible. The matter entrusted to me by the emperor. Chong Ming, however, couldn't help but return to his true form and open his double pupils. Countless eyes dispelled the black mist and charged straight towards the Suanio. The Suanio saw the situation and returned to its original form, flying high into the sky with Chong Ming. You came and went, playing happily. The clouds and mist in the sky were filled with flames, and the moonlight appeared and faded from time to time. The next morning, Lu Xu and Jiang Xiaobai had already left. Suanio seemed to have finally found the step and said disdainfully. This time, it can be considered as a favor for me to sell you the Ten Thousand Demons Hall. Chong Ming let out a cold snort. Didn't I give you a favor? Qi Ling hugged Chong Ming from behind, gritted his teeth and extended five fingers, urging him. After all, he is an elder in the underworld, so don't compete for verbal gain. Chong Ming's body and mind were melted by the sudden softness, 
and he grabbed Chi Ling's hand and said. Are you serious? You do all the household chores for five days. Chi Ling gritted his teeth and said. Take it seriously. The Suanio whistled, tied half of its burnt hair into a high ponytail, and flew away triumphantly. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Victorious Encounter A Beautiful Legged Imperial Sister You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Victorious Encounter A Beautiful Legged Imperial Sister Walking by the Anfeng Pond, the spring breeze brushes my face. There is an island in the pond, and there is a pond in the island. Chong Ming was surprised today that Qi Ling was able to wake up early at 4 a.m., even though it made him feel a bit uncomfortable to just pack herself and her bedding into the car. After a bumpy journey, Qi Ling finally arrived at Anfengtang. Before he could recover his composure, he took the daming to take photos. Oh! I didn't realize before that you were quite fond of beauty. Qi Ling took away Chong Ming's hand that rubbed his eyes and said coquettishly, Nonsense. There's no girl who doesn't love beauty. Chong Ming responded, Okay, our little spirit is the most beautiful. Qi Ling turned her back and said, Don't make a fuss, take a picture quickly. I have arranged a beautiful sister, don't take a picture of me worse than her. The two of them were moving, and a sudden dark cloud in the air blocked the sun, causing a noticeable increase in humidity in the air. Ha ha. It's really disappointing, Chong Ming. Stop filming and come to the pavilion to take shelter from the rain. An extremely sexy beauty walked towards the two of them, her red hair wavy, wearing a black leather jacket and buttocks wrapped jeans, and a pair of long and beautiful legs with black mesh stockings. The woman's voice is high and cold. Are you the current owner of the 10,000 Demons Hall? I am Xing Yu, nice to meet you. How did she know that I was the owner of the 10,000 Demons Hall? Qi Ling had some social anxiety. While chatting online, in reality, she couldn't say a word. Chong Ming, this is the sister I mentioned. Chong Ming looked up and down at Xing Yu, with a hint of threat in his eyes, what do you want to do? Xing Yu sat down directly next to Chong Ming, stared at him for a while, and smiled, saying. I just asked my little sisters to take a picture with me. This little brother is too strict with his girlfriend. Qi Ling blushed and said, No more, Sister Xingyu, Chong Ming can be my ancestor now. How could she be my boyfriend? Xing Yu raised his index finger and hissed, Master, you monster, you don't like that. Until now, Qi Ling realized that Xing Yu was also a demon. Why are you so unlucky? I originally planned to invite my beautiful sister to take beautiful photos together, but ended up falling into a trap of wishful thinking. The drizzle quickly falls and has a gradually worsening trend. The pavilion by the pond was built in the style of the Han dynasty, and the view in the rain has a unique flavor. Sheng Yu's sitting posture was very graceful, with his left leg pressed against his right leg, and his two calves tightly fitting together. Qi Ling also wanted to do this but found it a bit embarrassing. Chong Ming immediately stood up and sat on the other side, speaking frankly. If you have anything, just say it. The rain intensified, causing splashes on the water surface. As you can see, wherever I go, there will be a sudden rainstorm. If I stay at one place, there will be a flood soon. So I want to turn to the 10,000 Demons Hall to make me lose this curse-like ability. For thousands of years, Xing Yu has been wandering non-stop on this continent. Her innate ability to divert water allows her to only reside in mountain reservoirs with well-developed water conservancy facilities, and in places where humans gather, she cannot even stay for a day. Chong Ming saw that Qi Ling had become very introverted, so he sat next to Qi Ling and said to Xing Yu. When encountering victories, there will be plenty of water. I heard that's your nature. Is it worth abandoning oneself for the sake of humanity? Xing Yu stirred his hair and said with some sadness. That's not my nature. This place used to be called Shaopi, but even longer ago it was called Yushan. Yushan, 
that is a name recorded in ancient books. Clouds cover the nearby land for hundreds of miles all year round, and floods come from the sky, continuously washing away the surrounding mountains, forming an extremely fertile plain at the foot of the mountains, but it cannot be developed into fertile fields. In 598 BC, the palace of the king of Chu. Sun Shueo, the construction of the Yulo Irrigation District was highly praised and praised by the people of Chu in China. Relying on the guidance of the king, Lord Yulu worked hard and diligently, which was not solely attributed to Ao. Well said. There is a place in China called Yushan, where the demon bird is more beautiful than the encounter. If you are willing to kill the demon bird for me, open good fields, and serve the country and the people, it will be an immortal achievement. Twenty miles away from the Yushan area, pedestrians all wear raincoat. Sun Shueo stopped an old man and asked, Sir, how long has this phenomenon been going on? How long? Oh, from ancient times to the present, it has been like this, suffering is unbearable, suffering is unbearable. Sun Shueo bowed to the old man and said goodbye. He walked to the foot of Yushan, only then did he understand what it meant to be a collapse of the Tianhe River, with rain falling like pillars. Fortunately, the vegetation around here is lush, otherwise there would be no place to stand. Sun Shueo ordered his entourage to quickly build a bamboo hut, in order to observe the terrain here for a long time and find a good way to build a dam and turn floods into live water. Ah Zhuang, this type of bamboo is tough and tall, growing very densely. It can be harvested more. The young man named Ah Zhuang rolled up his sleeves, spat and rubbed his hands, using his strength to chop bamboo as easily as a woman mowing grass. Lord Ling Yin, Zhuang doesn't have any other abilities, but he has strength. Everyone burst out laughing heartily. Suddenly, everyone's gaze was drawn to a woman walking towards them. Her attire was very strange and not a popular style in any contemporary feudal country. The woman wore two bright red scarves wrapped around her chest, with the two ends of the scarves tied in a knot behind her and wrapped around her arms, exposing her flat lower abdomen, the lower body is loose silk wide leg pants, but the pants are slit below the thighs, revealing the charming curves of the calves, she was not wearing shoes, and the small bell on her ankle was very eye-dot catching. Although not truly stunning, it still has a charming appearance and a charming smile. It's hard to say whether it's sexy or innocent. A few young masters, what are you doing here? Sun Shueo immediately grabbed his sword and raised his hand to stop the chattering crowd, his eyes slightly mesmerized as he drew his sword and said, Demon. In this jade mountain, you can only be victorious. The rain is getting heavier and another wave of mountain torrents is about to erupt. Xing Yu chuckled lightly and said, It's not common to see men who are not close to women. Isn't it good to be obedient and buried in the mountain flood? Sun Shueo decisively drew his sword and stabbed the woman in front of him, saying to Zhuang, Zhuang, take them first and tell the people at the foot of the mountain that a flash flood is coming. Sir, Zhuang cannot leave. Xing Yu easily gripped the blade with his two fingers, and with a slight force, the blade flipped outward. Get lost. Do you want to drag me down? Zhuang bowed deeply to Sun Shueo and shouted to the others, Let's go. Obviously, ordinary weapons cannot harm this demon bird, and the mountain torrent is within reach of the trees. Sun Shueo put down his knife and took a step forward, holding on to Xing Yu tightly. Demon bird, even today is shattered to pieces, I will never let go. Xing Yu has lived for thousands of years and has never seen such a character. Why do you have to exterminate me completely? Upon hearing this, Sun Shueo was taken aback and then asserted. Xing Yu, your existence is a disaster to the people of Chu. She smiled and said sorrowfully. Disasters. I have never taken a step out of Yushan in these years. When I was here, there was not much Chu state. Now you call me a disaster. Blocking is better than dredging. Sun Shueo killed Xing Yu today, can he really feel at ease in the future? Moreover, if Xing Yu were really ruthless, he would have been submerged in the mudslide long ago. 
Shen Yu flew into the air with Sun Shuao, and the rain hit both of them, making it difficult to see whether it was tears or water. I've heard of you before, Sun Shuao, a talented minister in water management. He he. Isn't it that I don't want to go see this vast world? Sun Shueo never knew that this was the way of heaven and could not be reversed by human labor. In his view, Xinyu was born with the potential to cause floods, which was not something she could prevent. But as long as people can follow the trend, they can still change their destiny against the sky. If you successfully encounter a girl, may I believe in Ao once and ask her to leave Yushan first and return to this place after three years. People will no longer have to be affected by floods, and the girl's reign will be a blessing rather than a disaster for the state of Chu. Girl. This is the first time someone has called her Xingyu girl. Sir, it's easy to say. If I go to another country, isn't it also a curse in the eyes of its people? Sun Shuao suddenly realized that it was not natural for humans to make concessions in everything they encountered. With Ao's life as a guarantee, Ao Ding will find a solution within two days. If not, Ao is willing to rely on the girl to succeed. Looking at the man's firm gaze, Xing Yu nodded silently and sent Sun Shuao to the foot of the mountain, saying before parting. The rain is increasing day by day, with a cycle of seven days, and today happens to be the seventh day. Tomorrow's rain will be the lightest in seven days, and I hope you can find a way to control the water as soon as possible. Sun Shueo bowed his hand to express his gratitude. Although the mountain flood had stopped, everything around him was in chaos. Ah Zhuang and his companions were uncertain about their lives and lives, and the trouble had just begun. As they approached the village where they had previously rested, A Zhuang and his group quickly welcomed each other. After asking each other for safety, Sun Shueo suddenly realized that this was the most suitable place for building water conservancy facilities. This village is located on a hillside, with a low terrain that is prone to water accumulation, and the flash floods will stop shortly before reaching the village. The Jishu Mountain to the east, Longqi Mountain to the southeast, and Longshua Mountain to the west all have streams intersecting here, surrounded by mountains, making it a feng shui treasure trove for water storage and irrigation. The only risk is leaning against the Jade Mountain, where the rain keeps washing away the mountain, making it difficult to carry out construction. Sun Shueo pointed to a pavilion not far away and said, Since people call that pavilion Shaoting, from now on, this will be Shaopi. To quickly build water gates to control the amount of water, achieve open door drainage, and close door water storage, it is necessary to first discuss with Xingyu. After two days of on-dot site investigation, Sun Shueo had a rough plan in his mind. This time Sun Shueo went up the mountain without bringing anyone, and Xing Yu was surprised that he had kept his word and returned alone. Did you find a way to control the water, sir? I have a jade pendant that can alleviate the disturbance of rain and fog. It was gifted by Xian Gui during the flood control in the Yunyu wilderness. You can wear this jade and travel to various countries, but you cannot stay in one place for a long time. As long as you stay away from the crowd, no one will notice that the worsening rain is related to you. Is this the master's method of water management? Let me wander around without a home from now on. Sun Shueo knew it was extremely unfair to Xingyu, but at the moment, there was no other way. As Ao Xian said earlier, in three years, I swear to the girl with my life that there will be no more floods in this place. At that time, the girl's reign will not only be a disease of Chu, but also a blessing of Chu. In just three years, the victory was just a flick of the finger. Xing Yu took the jade pendant from Sun Shueo's hand and lifted the man's chin, staring straight at him. Sir, it's agreed to meet in three years. Speaking of which, Xing Yu looked into the distance and stopped talking, as if the story had come to an end. The rain slowly eased, and Qi Ling noticed a jade pendant hanging around Xing Yu's waist, shining slightly. She didn't understand why Xing Yu cared so much about human life and death, and what the meaning of the agreement with Sun Shuao was. At the end of the day, why are you wronging yourself for humanity? 
Shen Yu looked at the stone statue of Sun Shueo by the pond, and his gaze softened a lot. When I was born, it happened to be a fierce battle between humans and gods. The river was stained red with blood, and my fellow race was brutally slaughtered. In order to protect me, Lord Yushur gave me the ability to divert water. She sent me to Yushan and said she would come to pick me up soon. Yushan is a necessary passage for the Chiyu tribe to move northward. Chi Ling knew that further questioning was a bit out of bounds. It was not her intention to encounter this today. Chi Ling saw Xing Yu's cosplay image sharing on a social media app, and after several days of discussing photography techniques, she decided to come to Mianji. In order to prevent being jumped by the fairy, she even pulled Chong Ming up. Chi Ling summoned the 10,000 Demons Manual and said, Encountering Sister Sheng, the power of Rain Master will be stripped from you, and correspondingly, you will have to pay 30% of the demon power. Xin Yu decisively signed her name and must return the Jade Pendant to that person. Everything is up to the owner's sister. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Victory Chapter 2 The Power of Rain Masters you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Victory Chapter 2 The power of Rain Master since the ability to win is related to the Rain Master, directly seeking the Rain Master to solve the problem is the most effective. The saying goes that the person who unties the bell still needs to tie the bell, but Yushur is an ancient demon with abilities comparable to God's. The belief in him and Fungwa has a long history in the human world. Qi Ling's current strength is not enough to directly track down a big demon like Yushur. But in Qi Ling's heart, there is someone who must have a way to relieve the power of winning the water. Qi Ling pressed his two fingers against his eyebrows, and quickly drew a talisman on his chest with one hand. He used golden light as ink and a cool breeze as paper. Young generation Qi Ling, we respectfully invite the god of the Central Committee. The seven summoning divine arts of the thirteen secret arts of the ten thousand demons hall can directly summon the gods they know, but the appearance of the gods depends on their own wishes. Qi Ling's ancestors were the great Wuzhu, who was responsible for the human worship of the Western Queen Mother and the Zhulong in the Kunlun Mountains. Therefore, the skill of communicating with the gods is an innate ability of the Qi family. The clear sunshine enveloped the sky and earth, and the dark clouds instantly turned into steam in the air. The time between heaven and earth seems to have stopped. A dignified middle dot aged woman emerged from the ground, not wearing gold or silver, but rather quite simple. The powerful pressure made Chong Ming and Xing Yu sincerely respect each other, and the two demons stood up solemnly. This is the second time Qi Ling has seen the great god of Hudu. The last time we met was when he was six years old and was abducted and spanked by Wu Ji Qi. Wu Ji Qi grabbed her two calves upside down with one hand, then pricked her with the hair on his face and joked, saying, Believe Qi, my name also includes Qi. How dare you pee on your ancestors' heads? Xiao Qiling cried while urinating. Don't. You furry monkey is not my ancestor. Woo 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 woo. It was not until his father Qi Chen invited the great god of Hutu that Wu Ji Qi Fong bypassed Qi Ling. Wu Ji Qi's hair was straight and hard, and Qi Ling's face was almost disfigured because of it. She hated all the monkeys for it. The smile of the later earth god was as kind as the grandmother in Qi Ling's memory. It's you, little pea kid. What can I do for you? Little pea baby. Sheng Yu and Chong Ming couldn't help but feel a bit overwhelmed. Qi Ling supported the later Earth God and respectfully said, Grandma Hudu, do you know how to eliminate the power of the Rain Master? Hudu glanced at Sheng Yu and understood the general idea. Oh, when I'm busy with my girlfriend, I think of Grandma Hudu. Sheng Yu's face turned red, and before he could defend himself, Chong Ming spoke first. You misunderstood. Although the trend in the human world has been more open lately, Qi Ling still likes the opposite sex. Xing Yu smiled to himself and said no more. Ho Tu picked up the jade pendant from Xing Yu's waist and carefully examined it, saying. 
This is an item belonging to the Xian Turtle, which can enhance and maintain qi luck. If you are not a person of Heavenly Sha, you don't need to wear it. After speaking, she gave Shen Yu a meaningful glance. The person who gave this to you will not last for generations, right? Shen Yu lightly bit his lower lip and knelt down, saying. May the great deity wish the little monster a return to its original owner. Ho Tu gently stroked Sheng's cheek and said calmly. I promised Qi Chen to help this little pea child for the last time. You young people need to walk down the road on your own. A burst of blue dot green true qi emanated from Sheng Yu's body and flowed into the backpack on the chair in the pavilion. When a few people came to their senses, Hudu had already disappeared. Qi Ling asked in confusion. Grandma Hudu, what's the last time? Have you left Qi Ling alone? Qi Yu, you're coming back from hell. Jolie Soldier Master Qi Yu. The man who once intimidated the gods with his mortal body. Chong Ming gently hugged Qi Ling's shoulder and said, What are you afraid of? I'm here. The gloomy weather swept away, and hundreds or even thousands of birds flew out of the small island of Anfengtang. Xing Yu touched the jade pendant and looked very pleased. She bowed and said. I already feel that the strength of the Rain Master is not by my side. Thank you very much to the younger sister of the museum owner for her help. Qi Ling took out the 10,000 Demons Manual from his backpack. Sister Xing Yu doesn't need to be polite. Please sign your name so that you can write a document. Strange, this girl is very suspicious today. As soon as Xing Yu finished signing, Chong Ming said. By the way, how did you get to know each other? If Qi Ling is still pondering the afterlife, if Qi Yu were to resurrect, his seal would also loosen. Does this mean that the Qi family's thousand-year accumulation finally has a place to be useful? Sheng Yu's sexy swimsuit photos immediately disrupted her thinking, and the sexy older sister showed them one by one with photos from her phone. In fact, I am an anime cos blogger and tourism blogger, whose online name is Water Meet Sunny Day. Qi Ling became more and more excited as she watched. Surprisingly, this otaku girl was still a fan of Sheng Yu, and she exclaimed that she wanted to post it. Sheng Yu's cold and aloof demeanor has disappeared, and Qi Ling's hot face feels a bit hazy to her. The two girls became more and more excited as they flipped over, while Chong Ming remained calm. He posed his camera on his chest and said to Qi Ling with suspicion. Sheng Yu has hundreds of thousands of fans, how could he just agree to meet you? And even take photos with you? Actually, Qi Ling doesn't know why this happened, after all, it was Sheng Yu who took the initiative to find her. Sheng Yu clicked on Qi Ling's homepage and said to Chong Ming. Brother Chong Ming, the owner's portrait is of you. It's been thousands of years, and your appearance is not much different from when I first met you in Shaopi. It's just that your dressing style has changed a bit. The image of a virtuous young woman with short red hair came to Chong Ming's mind, and he even used his double pupils to realize that the big wave spicy girl in front of him was actually the little woman who liked to follow him. Are you Sun Shueo's wife? Shocking Qi Ling for a whole year, ha! Huh? A young man carrying a camera ran over, and a not too light digital machine swayed or swayed on his thick shoulders. Xiaoyu, I've been looking for you for a long time. Who are these two? Xin Yu suddenly became full of aura and returned to the appearance of a cold goddess. She untied the jade pendant from her waist. No, this is for you. Don't lose it anymore, there are still many scenic spots that haven't been photographed. Great. Xiao Yu, you're so beautiful. There are still many places I want to take photos of. Xin Yu lightly pinched the man's nose and said, Let's go. The man quickly caught up with Sheng Yu's figure and turned to Qi Ling and the two of them, clasping his fists and saying. Thank you very much. Goodbye, both of you. Qi Ling was dumbfounded this time. Not only did he not take some memorable photos, but he was also discovered by Chong Ming using photos of his abdominal muscles as various wallpaper avatars. Chong Ming, will you listen to my explanation? 
Chong Ming didn't seem very angry, he shook his camera and said with some pride, let's go. In Chong Ming's memory, the image of Xing Yu is another. In 595 BC, Yushan. After Xing Yu left, the rain in Yushan also left. In the past three years, she has traveled to various countries and witnessed the coldness of the world and the warmth and coldness of human relationships. Every time I accidentally come across a jade pendant, I miss Sun Shuao even more. Did I fall in love with him so easily? Sun Shuao took the opportunity to lead the people in promoting water conservancy, building embankments and weirs, opening communication channels, and turning the originally barren mud land into fertile farmland. Since the jade pendant left, Sun Shuao often felt bone soreness and menstrual pain, and his vision gradually blurred. He remembered the dragon in the wilderness of clouds and rain. Before its death, the dragon cursed him with the suffering of water vapor erosion for eternity and could not live long. The mysterious turtle gave him a jade pendant for this reason. Now that the Shaopi project is nearing its end, it's time for Miss Xingyu to come back. Sun Shuao did not wait for victory at the foot of the mountain. When the drizzle splashed ripples, he muttered to himself. Did you disappoint the girl? Oil paper umbrellas enveloped the two of them, with nothing but the sound of rain. I'll give you this jade pendant. As a gift to the girl, there is no reason to take it back. The moment Xingyu took off the jade pendant, the rainfall intensified fiercely. Unexpectedly, the oil paper umbrella was filled with potholes. If you want to interact with humans, this jade pendant cannot be taken off. After a while, Zhuan came to report in a hurry. Lord Ling Yin, there is a man in battle armor catching demons at the foot of the mountain. Catching demons. Sun Shuao instinctively looked at Xing Yu behind him, while the other side quietly looked at him. Miss, wait here for a moment. Ao will go and return. At the foot of the mountain, a black giant tiger was falling to the ground and groaning, with its teeth shattered all over the ground. Chong Ming, dressed in a blood-stained golden armor, expressionlessly broke every bone of the black tiger. Upon seeing this situation, Sun Shuao immediately arched his hand and said. Young master, eliminating this evil beast is truly a blessing for all the people of Chu, but I don't know why he came here. After the last gruesome groan of the black tiger, Chong Ming wiped the blood off his hands with tiger skin and said lightly. Just routine business, where is this? After realizing that Chong Ming would not attack him, the onlookers cheered passionately for the heroic act of killing the evil tiger. Amazing, amazing. But the rain suddenly fell again, it's victory. Victory has returned. Sun Shueo comforted the crowd while observing Chong Ming's movements. Chong Ming's lack of humor was like facial paralysis, and he used the rain to wash away his armor. I'm hungry, do you have any food? Sun Shueo hesitated and looked back, but a bird's chirp dispelled his concerns. Some, some, my house is not far away. At the dinner table, three people sat opposite each other, dressed in ordinary women's cloth clothes. Chong Ming naturally believed that the two were husband and wife. Sheng Yu's cooking skills are surprisingly good, in her own words, after living alone for so many years, even the most foolish person has become a first-class chef. Your wife's cooking is much more delicious than the chef's in Kunlun Immortal Palace. Sheng Yu lifted his hair slightly and looked at Sun Shuao with affection. Well, I'm not worthy of Miss Sheng Yu. Please don't say that. I can't afford to ruin Miss Sheng Yu's reputation. Sheng Yu was clearly a bit angry, and Chong Ming didn't care what others said, just simply scraping rice into his mouth. After drinking and eating, Chong Ming opened his double pupils and said to Xing Yu. As a demon, being too virtuous and virtuous is not good. I also have a hunting target, and learning how to fight with me is also convenient for protecting myself. So, during a period of time, Xing Yu followed Chong Ming, who was then the god of warding off evil, to eliminate many evil beasts that had caused harm to the side. A month later, Chong Ming received a new task and left Yushan. 
and Sun Shueo also expressed his feelings to Xingyu. Ao doesn't understand romance and only wishes to marry a girl for generations to come. In the following thousands of years, Sun Shueo fell in love with Xingyu at a glance in every life. Xingyu didn't know how Sun Shueo preserved her memory, but this kept her act of returning the jade pendant failing. Sun Shueo would rather die of illness than take back the token of love that allowed the two to get along. The content from chapter 5 onwards is currently being remade, end of this chapter. Chapter 6 Three Qing's Chapter 1 Proud and Delicious Lowly You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Three Qing's Chapter 1 Proud and Delicious Lowly In ancient times, in Yushan, Qingyu had not yet been born, and the radiance of the jade echoed with each other. The three green birds suddenly flashed in it. At this time, the Queen Mother of the West had not yet cultivated her divine character and was still hibernating in the cave of Yushan. During the day, the sky and earth flickered, bright and dark, and a huge snake-shaped shadow obscured the sunlight above Yushan. The snake-like creature's radiance shines brightly. Just being in place is enough to intimidate all spirits, and the gusts of cold wind in every breath are enough to distort space. Zhu Long, please meet the Lord of Yushan, Queen Mother of the West. Echoes spread between heaven and earth, birds startle and fly, and beasts roar. I saw a golden light shining in the mountains and forests, and a slender and powerful girl walked out. The girl had a leopard tail and tiger teeth, full of wildness. Candle 9 Eam. The choking eagle and dog, why are they coming to me? Zhulong's expression remained unchanged, his eyes frequently closed, and the sky near Yushan alternated day and night, making it difficult to distinguish between Yin and Yang. As you can see, I am no longer obedient to any deity. Choking has died, and the Queen Mother of the West has helped me remove the twelve Taisui gods. Therefore, I am willing to help you become the ruler of Kunlun and the god of all gods. The curve at the corner of the Queen Mother's mouth was quite stunning, and she gave a slight glance to the third green bird on one side, who immediately penetrated into the clouds. Zhu Jioin, I haven't seen your sincerity yet. In 2023, Wanyao Pavilion. The cleaning and maintenance inside the museum have always been replaced by Qi Ling and Chong Ming Zhou. When the sun rises, the door of Qi Ling's room has not yet been opened. What's wrong? Is it uncomfortable? Chong Ming lightly tapped on Qi Ling's door. The door is not locked, come in. It's an extremely light and agile female voice, definitely not Qi Ling. Chong Ming's face suddenly changed, his nerves tightened, and he used his index finger to open the door. He saw Qi Ling lying on the bed twisting and twisting, tightly bound, with a very blue girl by the bed. This girl is not only wearing a blue dress, blue shoes and socks, but also her hair color is blue. Two pairs of ponytails playfully flicked as if they were alive. The girl's index finger pressed against her lips and hissed. Chong Ming, long time no see. They are playing games with the owner of the small shop. Chong Ming's heart sank as she was the messenger of the Queen Mother of the West. San Qing. San Qing, if you want to test your strength, just wrap your wrist with spiritual silk thread and tie our museum owner up. Do you want to go to war with me? Qi Ling nodded suddenly, it was too much to wake up early in the morning and be tied up by someone. San Qing walked back and forth with his head raised, his tone carrying a hint of threat. The power contained in her body has not even been developed for one-tenth. How should we deal with the soon-to-be-resurrected Qi Yu? She neatly tore off the tape from Qi Ling's mouth. Qi Ling looked at San Qing with a gloomy face and tearful eyes, saying. I'll have to pluck all your dead bird's hair sooner or later. Seeing that San Qing had no intention of harming Qi Ling, Chong Ming immediately stepped forward to examine Qi Ling's body and said, Dula has turned red, Linger, I'll give you pain relief. Because he was afraid that San Qing would suddenly do something to Qi Ling, Chong Ming didn't dare to approach earlier. After confirming that Qi Ling was not seriously affected, Chong Ming said to San Qing. What does the resurrection of Qi Yu have to do with us? 
why did you do such a thing? Sanqing displayed the ring bestowed by the Queen Mother of the West on her little finger, and with a pointed nose, she said. The Queen Mother of the West hopes that you can stop Qiyu, but I can't see such hope from you. Upon hearing the Queen Mother of the West, Chongming couldn't say anything more, but tenderly stroked Qi Ling's hair. Since the first great Wu Zhu, the Qi family has been working for the West Queen Mother and Zhu Jioin, and cannot disobey them. Qi Ling's brain was blank now, and he was about to get angry. A charming and fragrant breath came over, and his consciousness became increasingly blurred. Cold sweat broke out, and his body twisted uncontrollably. Chong Ming glared angrily at San Qing Dao. Are you satisfied now? Get lost. Brother, don't be angry. I'm just following orders. Qi Ling felt that the scenes around her were constantly transforming, and history was like a movie in a cut scene, flashing through her mind, replaying it constantly, all the way back to the place where the candle dragon killed the great wilderness. In ancient times, it was on the top of Kunlun Mountain. Although Zhu Long has the power of day and night conversion, it has no right to determine when day and night alternate. Now that the god of time, Chou Ming, has died, we need to establish rules for heaven and earth, and for the four seasons of the human world, Zhu Long believes that it is necessary to seal Chou Ming's son, namely the twelve Taisui gods. Shedij, Dankei, Jishu, Dewanglu, Guizang, Xiechia, Qiantan, Suo'o, Eunuch Mao, Dayuan Xian, Kunden, and Shifenru. The first thing that needs to be eliminated is the most arrogant and domineering Si Shi Shen Duan in daily life. The great wilderness is carefree and unrestrained, often encroaching on time, recklessly disrupting and prolonging the power of the past, causing chaos during the cultivation of the people in the flood and famine, and uncertain rest days. The twelve hours must operate steadily, seeking the four seasons for heaven and earth, and creating peace for all people. In the great wilderness, I will never leave you today. The candle dragon exhaled a majestic dragon breath like the sea, and the great wilderness continued to delay time, but the dragon flame continued to approach. How could that be? You can resist the power of time, Candle Nine Een. You killed your father. You are fighting against the gods. The dragon flame fiercely burned the desolate body, constantly shrinking and shrinking in its howls, eventually evaporating into air and drifting in the sky. If a deity regards others as mere dogs, they are not worthy of being gods. Qi Ling tried her best to concentrate, and the surging blood made her tremble all over, but she couldn't move a single bit. This feeling made her very uncomfortable. San Qing, you little bluebird. What tricks are you playing? A blue bird landed on Qi Ling's shoulder, with three curved dull hairs on its head. I didn't do anything, it's because you're too weak. Shuttling through history is a unique ability of San Qing. Being humiliated like this, Qi Ling's face became increasingly ugly, it seemed that only that move could be used. Qi Ling bit through the tip of his tongue, used the blood between his tongues as a guide, and relied on the true Qi of Fushi. Break. The second of the thirteen secret techniques of the Ten Thousand Demons Hall. Backtracking, which can bring the practitioner's mental state back to its optimal moment. When the practitioner's strength is strong enough, they can even trace their physical state back to their original state. After feeling that he could move his little finger, Qi Ling said to San Qing in a pleading tone. Good sister, please help me. San Qing raised her head slightly and before she could snort contemptuously, Qi Ling grabbed her neck and the small bird fluttered away. Does it feel uncomfortable to be pinched by someone? Qi Ling quickly scratched San Qing's armpit and pulled out a tail feather, How are you, good sister? Are you good? When San Qing uses the power of history to shuttle, he will only return to his original form and lose his attack ability. Therefore, San Qing has always been only the messenger and assistant of the West Queen Mother, unable to fulfill the responsibility of protecting her like cunning. Qi Ling kept scratching her armpit with San Qing's feathers. Stop it. Ha ha ha. You stinky girl. Don't touch my feathers, ha ha ha. Good sister. 
please spare me. Qi Ling let go of San Qing, and in an instant, the scene changed rapidly. When he opened his eyes again, San Qing was nowhere to be seen. In front of him was the scene of West Queen Mother and Zhu Long working together to attack Kunlun Mountain. In the past, the gods appeared vulnerable to the attack of the Queen Mother of the West. How could these gods be so weak? Zhu Long answered and said. The old gods have lost the hearts of the people and the power of faith, so they are naturally not our enemies. A huge sound broke through the Kunlun mountain gate, and the heavenly beast and the cunning intertwined. The western heavenly emperor Xiaohao followed suit and emerged, surrounded by five colorful phoenixes. Xiaohao's voice was a bit lazy but still dignified. Are you the queen mother of the west who claims to lead mortals towards equality? The queen mother of the west glanced at the candle dragon and laughed heartily. Western heavenly emperor. Those weak people respect you as a god, you were just a god. And now, I am a god. Five phoenixes exhaled their breath of gold, wood, water, fire, and earth. The candle dragon resisted with its body, while the queen mother of the west leaped high as she saw the opportunity. With a broad claw strike, she tore open the space and charged straight towards Xiaohao. Xiaohao smiled and continued, If you want this Kunlun mountain, take it. As for whether you can do better, let's wait and see. Five phoenixes and Xiaohao dissipated into illusions in place. The enlightened beast immediately knelt down on the ground, greeting the lord of Kunlun. All the demons and gods on Kunlun Mountain stopped fighting and knelt down together, saying. Congratulations to the Lord of Kunlun. The Queen Mother of the West bestowed the demon suppressing three-blade halberd on the enlightened beast, you are very good at observing the situation. I am only guarding the gate for the Lord of Kunlun, said the enlightened voice, neither humble nor overbearing for Qi Ling, the process of Queen Mother of the West's accession to Kunlun was clearly a bit too smooth, and historically, the promises made by Queen Mother of the West have not been realized. So, how did the Queen Mother of the West gradually become the god of all gods and the head of goddesses? What happened here? San Qing suddenly appeared, flapping Qi Ling's cheek before casting the spell with his wings. The screen turned again, and Qi Lingang was about to curse. A burst of conversation made him shudder. Above the immortal palace, the Queen Mother of the West is dressed in a hundred phoenix dance skirt woven with gold thread, complemented by a rose hairpin forged from the yin jade. Underneath the throne is the humanoid candle nine yin, with bloodstains remaining at the corners of his mouth, dressed in the plain clothes of sinners. On that day, you killed the Huang Luo for our palace, saying that the number of hours should not be determined by heaven but should operate according to established rules. Now, who is obstructing the rules? Zhu Long's smile was somewhat bleak. I did not see it wrong. Your ambition goes far beyond becoming the ruler of the three realms. You want to become the ruler of all the rules that exist. Don't talk nonsense, Zhuin. This palace won't kill you, but it will forever seal you. Sending you back to Zhongshan is the last honor this palace will give you. As if awakened by a nightmare, Qi Ling sat up suddenly, panting like a child choking on water. What about San Qing? Chong Ming probed her forehead and picked up a glass of water to feed her. I'm leaving. But she said she'll come again tomorrow. How could it be so gentle? Qi Ling gently grasped Chong Ming's hand and said, What's wrong? You're not like this usually. Chong Ming's eyes were slightly red, and he turned his back and said. Ling'er, you need to go to the underworld to experience and be prepared to fight against Qi Yu. Qi Ling detested the inexplicable sadness and lowered his eyes to look at him, exclaiming, Aren't I wearing pajamas? This is black and white Hanfu. Where did it come from? Chong Ming, you. Chong Ming suddenly turned around and kissed her forehead. The underworld is not peaceful, with perverts rampant. You need to dress up as a man. Qi Ling's ears turned red and he said, Oh my! What are you doing? End of this chapter Chapter 7 3 Qing Chapter 2 
Journey to the Underworld You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 3 Ching Chapter 2 Journey to the Underworld The Immortal Palace stands between the clouds and clouds on the mountaintop of Kunlun Mountain, magnificent and majestic like the Buddha Hall in the snow area, and magnificent comparable to the Tang Dynasty Imperial Palace. The main hall of the Immortal Palace has been closed for thousands of years, and only Sanqing can enter and exit it. Above the main hall is a crystal clear and flawless crystal, which binds the body of the Queen Mother of the West. Her graceful figure and crystal complement each other, making it an invaluable work of art. Sanqing Yeo landed in front of the crystal and transformed into a human after looking around. Sanqing, how is that child? San Qin pinched his double ponytails and circled, pacing and saying, it's not bad. He has some courage on him, but his mastery of the demon power in the Ten Thousand Demons Manual is almost zero. The Queen Mother of the West in the Crystal remained silent, unable to see any emotional fluctuations. If she were to master all the demon powers in the Ten Thousand Demons Manual, she would probably be invincible in these three realms. Sending her to the underworld, as long as she could unleash 50% of her body's power, Chi would not be worried. Sister, how can we defeat Chi Yu with only 50% of the eternal demon power? The Queen Mother of the West snorted lightly and said, The 10,000 Demons Manual is made by Bai Zai, using silk woven from Pangu's beard and hair. It is personally imprinted by Fushi and can not only absorb the power of demons for personal use, but also absorbed the power of gods, Buddhas, and various heavenly emperors. San Qing's heart was startled. How could a mortal body withstand the endless power of gods and demons? Moreover, the girl named Qi Ling has such poor talent that she may not be able to master 50% of the demon power in her lifetime, let alone the more profound divine power. According to your instructions, I did not allow Brother Chongming to accompany me, but he said that this is his last time doing something for you. It was unexpected for Chongming to agree, after all, that girl was her reincarnation. Sanqing became even more confused, but the Queen Mother of the West fell asleep and no longer answered. This is what Sanqing hates the most about the Queen Mother of the West. She always talks halfway. Stepping out of the immortal palace, not far away, the enlightened beast is practicing. Now, the entire Kunlun Immortal Mountain, only the Enlightened Beast and Sanqing are still here. Kaming, your muscles are getting better and better. The humanoid appearance of the Enlightened Beast is a topless young man who looks very delicate, even more so than many girls. He has long white hair and wears a necklace made up of nine small masks strung around his neck. The open dot minded tone is very dull, and people always look dull. Thank you. Sanqing, you are also very beautiful. Sanqing likes to chat with Kaiming because Kaiming has always been straightforward and won't say anything against his heart out of shyness or anger. But this characteristic also makes it difficult for people to understand the true thoughts of enlightenment, and people often doubt the straightforward truth. Sanqing lightly patted his open chest with his hands behind his back. So, do you like me? Sanqing is very lively and open-dot-minded. For some reason, as she watched the open-dot-minded confession without changing her expression, Sanqing remained unhappy, like a wooden person without emotions answering predetermined words. The only two of them who can freely move on Kunlun Mountain now, Sanqing suspects that the enlightened will say they like everyone. No, this is the chocolate I brought back from outside. Please accept it. Thank you. Sanqing, said Kaiming calmly as he took the chocolate the two of them stared at each other quietly, their enlightened eyes pure and blank, so much so that he couldn't notice Sanqing's gentle blue waves. The atmosphere became increasingly awkward, and Sanqing even had some eye pain. I have something else to do, I'll leave first. Goodbye, Sanqing. Really? Don't even know how to be careful on the road. And Qi Ling woke up very early today, ready to go to the underworld when the moonlight was about to run out in the early morning. Since yesterday when Chong Ming inexplicably kissed him, the two of them haven't talked much, creating a strange awkward atmosphere. However, 
what Chong Ming said also made some sense. Qi Ling decided to dress up as a man and go to the underworld, after all, he was so fair and beautiful that encountering some entangled perverts would be troublesome. Moreover, Chong Ming's judgment is indeed impatient. The Han Fu he chose is indeed very beautiful. Looking at himself in the mirror, Qi Ling even narcissistically thought, if I were to take a walk on the street now, countless sisters would come to me for contact information. But at the same time, thinking that the clothes were heavily worn on me yesterday, I felt a chill and said, this old pervert probably doesn't really like me. Although he is handsome, has good clothing, is gentle, and doesn't have any bad habits, we can't be together. I clicked on the things in my suitcase three times. Toothpaste, toothbrush, water cup, towel, sanitary napkin, small tent. It's basically foolproof. Qi Ling pressed one hand on the ground, and the Yin Yang fish map appeared. After obtaining the Fushi Aura, the effect of the Yin Yang fish map was greatly enhanced. Previously, it could only go to a fixed teleportation point in the underworld, but now it can directly reach any place in the underworld. It has to be said that as the founder of the Bagua diagram, the great deity Fushi truly surpassed Qi Ling's cognitive scope. With the blessing of Fushi's aura, the Yin Yang fish diagram has nearly doubled in size. As soon as they could pack their luggage together, Sanqing suddenly appeared and kicked away all of Qi Ling's plans, leaving only one person to be transported to the underworld. Sanqing inserted a talisman into Qi Ling's body and smiled proudly, Hee hee, you won't be able to come back until you complete your goal. Qi Ling exclaimed angrily, You little blue bird, you're a pervert. I got two more kicks before the teleportation left. Sanqing clapped her hands and said, I knew you didn't want to endure hardship, but fortunately, I appeared in time. Since the owner of the 10,000 Demons Hall is not here now, is there a better time than now to explore the secrets of the 10,000 Demons Hall? Moreover, both inside and outside the words of the Queen Mother of the West seem to be pointing out that the Qi family has a unique purpose in handling affairs for the Kunlun Immortal Palace. The first generation which Zhu Sanqing has also seen it, but for a human, she did not have much interest in discovering any privacy. She only remembers that it was a woman who wore a cloak all day and remained silent. Sanqing doesn't like the Wuzhu. She thinks that Wuzhu should be able to sing and dance, love to laugh and be playful. It's so boring to have a straight face all day. Moreover, at that time, the Queen Mother of the West did not allow any gods other than the Candle Dragon to communicate with the great Wuzhu. Later, the time and space of the Kunlun Immortal Palace were stagnant, and the Wuzhu of the Qi family no longer went to Kunlun. Later on, the profession of Wu Zhu gradually faded out of people's sight. The Qi family established the Ten Thousand Demons Hall, and San Qing heard that there were still some branches of the Qi family in the old Chu region, continuing to serve as the Wu Zhu. After hiding his figure, San Qing leaned against the wall and quietly approached the study of the Ten Thousand Demons Hall like a thief. She tentatively reached out her hand, and a red light suddenly appeared like static electricity swimming through her body. Sanqing was stunned and shocked by the electric current, and her saliva flowed, making her look like a less intelligent intellectual disability. Red lock, the lowest level of door sealing magic, is usually used to prevent thieves and can only serve as an alarm without causing any substantial damage. Damn it! Chong Ming. Looking back, there was no sign of anyone. Speaking of which, if Chong Ming were here, he would have appeared when he first played tricks on Qi Ling. Is that so? Chong Ming, this guy still followed, damn it. Since that's the case, San Qing decided to have a showdown. In order to prevent other ambushes, she activated her demonic power, transformed into her original form, spat out a blue light, instantly eliminated the door of the study from this dimension, and then teleported along the blue light channel into the study. Empty, the entire study is empty. It seems that this former traitor of the Queen Mother of the West, who was stationed in the Qi family, has long betrayed the immortal palace. Since he is going to the underworld, Qi Ling's first designated area is the Styx River. According to his father, 
There is a legendary sword buried by Qi Zhen, the third ancestor of the Qi family, under the river. Chang'e. Humph, our Qi family is not sacrificing our lives for you in the Kunlun Immortal Palace. As long as we rescue that one, any West Queen Mother, North Queen Mother, or the love envoy who goes to run errands, it's good to envoy. Although he had been instilled with various ancient legends of gods, demons, and ghosts by his father since childhood, in Qi Ling's memory, there was no connection between the Queen Mother of the West and Qi Yu. However, the Queen Mother of the West was so concerned about Qi Yu's resurrection that there must be some truth submerged in history. The Flower Sea on the other side of the Blue Underworld River is particularly bright red. If you don't often hear the screams of ghosts in the river, this place can also be considered a great scenic spot for taking photos in the underworld. Those ghosts who violate the laws of the underworld will be thrown into the Styx River by the ghost messengers, suffering from the pain of the river washing away their bones. If they want to climb onto the shore, they will be instantly devoured by the flowers on the other side, devouring their three souls and six souls. Ordinary ghosts can only persist in the Styx River for three days. Only by sincerely repenting and obeying the laws of the underworld, can they be pulled out of the chains commonly used by the dark. But the ghost Qi Ling was looking for, named Zhu Python, had been locked in the Styx River before the Black Impermanence and even before the Suanio era. Despite tens of thousands of years of soul washing, it remained incredibly powerful. The body of the python was bound by a chain crafted by the power of the five heavenly emperors, and at that time, the Styx River was still in an abyss. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Strange Stories A Desperate and Fierce Beast You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Strange Stories A Desperate and Fierce Beast at the Source of the Styx River, where flowers bloom the most on the other bank, Chi Ling found the python. A python with a horse head and a snake body, its entire dark body immersed in the Styx River, its head exposed to the water surface appears to be sleeping, and its head is covered with flowers from the other shore. According to the records of the Qi family ancestors, the Chang'e sword was under the body of Ju Python. Two thousand years ago, the seal of the python was loose. Qi Zhen used the secret technique of ten thousand swords to nail the chains on the python's body into the bottom of the Styx River with the Long Yi sword. Under the Styx River, Qi Ling was unwilling to guess how large the body of the horse python was. With the blessing of Fuxi's true Qi, Qi Ling used the power of the Rain Master to shoot out a huge stream of water, which rushed straight towards the eyes of the pony python, but failed to awaken it. It seems that I am currently unable to obtain the Chang'e sword. Kid, you smell delicious. Qi Ling turned around and saw a winged tiger staring at him. Poor and peculiar. Legend has it that in ancient times, the poor and evil plagued one side, feeding on humans, resulting in almost no one living south of the Yangtze River. In order to do the most evil and vicious things in the world, they went to various places to listen to the words of the wicked and regarded the entire human world as their slaughterhouse. The Yellow Emperor wanted Ing Long to kill Qi Qi, but Xiao Hao used his divine character as a guarantee and ultimately only sent Qi Qi to the Styx River to guard the horse python. It's not easy to deal with now. Poor Qi has been staying here for thousands of years, not to mention having enough to eat and drink, he was lucky enough not to starve to death. It turned out to be Mr. Poor and Impolite, so I'm leaving now. Qi Ling knew he couldn't turn his back to Qi Qi, otherwise this beast would tear himself apart in the next second. Poor and curious, its eyes twitched and it looked like a thin dog with a large skeleton, with a layer of skin revealing a different shape. Kid, can you make a deal with me? This guy's current state, it's impossible for him to fly. If Qi Ling uses the secret technique Ascension now, it's definitely impossible for Qi Qi to catch up. What transaction? Qi Qi circled around Qi Ling, looking at him and saying. There are ten seals inside your body. Of course, Qi Ling knew about this matter. This was because the Qi family had to bear the powerful demon and divine power of the ten thousand demons manual. 
If they were to unlock the seal directly, they would explode and die. The first of the thirteen secret techniques in the Ten Thousand Demons Hall is Divine Silence, which is a sealing technique created by Fushi himself. The Qi family had to master it since childhood, but Qi Chen has yet to teach this technique to Qi Ling just like practicing to defeat monsters, as the Qi spirit becomes stronger and stronger, the seals will decrease accordingly. In the end, all ten seals will be lifted, but for thousands of years, only one ancestor of the Qi family has broken through the seven seals. Qi Ling involuntarily took two steps back and said, Can you unlock the seal? This is not a joke. With Qi Ling's current strength, even if a layer of seal is lifted, it may cause the internal organs to be twisted and deformed by the powerful ancient power. The seal on your body is not weaker than the five emperors chain of the pony python, so I naturally have no choice. But I can immediately help you break through the first seal and reach the realm of one Zen. One Zen. How could Qi Qi know about the Qi family? Why should I believe you, poor guy? You're notorious for being cunning. Chi Chi began to sneer as a gust of Yin wind blew in. Do you think that I, the young master, have seen so many Chi family members and eaten so many Chi family members? To sum up, at his age, he should have seen the first generation of great Wu Zhu, and the third generation of great Wu Zhu Qi Zhen should have been present when he reinforced the seal. So it seems very convincing to claim that there is a way for Qi Ling to reach the realm of one Zen. Poor Qi, what do you want from me? In an instant, Qi Ling unexpectedly saw a hint of desolation in poor Qi's eyes. Poor Qi's tone of voice now sounded like a child who had done something wrong. Just ask for a message from me, young master. Will even the poor have people who care? It must be a demon. First, tell me how to achieve a Zen meditation, and it's not a problem how many words you want to convey. Following the guidance of Qi Ling, he discovered a skull in a flower sea on the other side. Kid, this is a ghost powder skeleton, which has been condensed from tens of thousands of dead souls since ancient times after being devoured by the flower sea on the other side. Breaking it, what do you think will happen? Just holding this ghost powder skeleton, Qi Ling felt endless resentment emanating from it. If it were shattered, it would probably at least cause the birth of a ghost king. Qi Qi felt very unhappy when he saw Qi Ling hesitating. Damn it, it's really embarrassing for your Qi family. The power hidden in you is beyond your ability to bear, but these ordinary ghost king and monster abilities absorb only good for you without any harm. Qi Ling is very clear about this principle. For example, what she can currently use is nothing more than a ray of Fushi's breath and Rain Master's water magic. Although these powers are extremely powerful, they are really insignificant compared to the abilities sealed in his body. How can you be sure that I can bear the ghost energy and soul of this ghost king? How many pounds and liang are you, young master? I can tell at a glance. Qi Ling stopped talking nonsense and directly crushed the skull in his hand. The blue sea of smoke instantly engulfed the surroundings, accompanied by the creaking sound of the skull. A small mountain-sized skeleton ghost king appeared. It has a fierce face, hands reaching into the sky, and its howls are very piercing. Qi Ling spread out the Ten Thousand Demons Manual, pressed his right hand on it, and condensed energy with his left fingers, transforming into the second young girl. Eat me a Gagarin anti-aircraft gun. Two energy pulses that exceeded the speed of sound only pounced on the forehead of the skeleton ghost king. The skeleton ghost king swept across it with one hand, easily cancelling it out. The accompanying gust of fishy wind almost made Qi Ling nauseous and vomited. Kid, you're really ashamed of your ancestors, Qi Qi laughed out loud, this kind of foul smell, I miss. No, how could I possibly tolerate it? Qi Ling was burying his head in nausea when the skeleton ghost king pulled out his spine and turned into a long white bone spear. The spear fiercely stabbed Qi Ling's crotch, leaving dozens of deep pits on the ground. Seeing that he was about to dodge, Qi Lingling's spirit machine moved and jumped up directly. He rode on the back of poor Qi, who was already bony and almost broke his lumbar spine. 
Do you want to murder this young master, this kid? Isn't that impossible? Besides, with just your physique, I haven't despised you for being so flustered yet. The bone spear stabbed faster and faster, and Chi Ling dodged around in extreme embarrassment. He couldn't help but laugh and blurted out, I'll go, hit the mole. What? No, it's okay. Jump west, hurry up. It's probably because I've been alone for too long, and I actually find it a bit fun. The king of skull and bones was a little bored. He broke three of his ribs, and countless bone blades shot down like a rainstorm. He secretly said that he was unlucky, thinking that he could only sell this ghost thing by himself. Chi Ling suddenly jumped up from the back of Chi Chi, crossed his index finger, and a white-haired Taoist appeared behind him. With a sweep of dust, the Taoist sent a golden light flying straight towards the skeleton ghost king, filled with various talismans. Thank you very much for helping me procrastinate, poor Chi. Could you please help me block this rain of bone blades? You kid. Chi Chi's wings spread open to protect himself and Chi Ling, and blood mist rose from them, dissolving all the bone blades that were shot at. The golden light reached the front and back of the skeleton ghost king, transforming into a huge halo that enveloped it. The purified light flashed and Chi Ling couldn't open her eyes. When I looked up again, there was no skeleton king left, but a heavy rain of ashes began to pour down. End of this chapter Chapter 9 The Mystery of Sleep You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 The Mystery of Sleep Chi Ling felt as if she had been chosen by the gods, bathed in a white light all over her body. She clearly felt the power flowing out of her body, and at this moment, a green light appeared in the Ten Thousand Demons Manual, rushing impatiently into her body. One Zen. Just like this, we have broken through the first realm in an ordinary way. Countless memories swept before his eyes, and Chi Ling couldn't distinguish whose memory it was for a moment, leaving only one name. Yun Zhong Jun. After the death of the skeleton ghost king, a ghost with only the upper body gradually emerged in this heavy rain of ashes. This ghost's lumbar spine is still connected to its upper body, looking like a tail, very frightening. Chi Ling could feel that the ghost was on the verge of disappearing completely. A leisurely voice of resentment came, kill Chao Kuo, clear the emperor's side. What are the sins of wrongdoing, what are the sins of wrongdoing? Poor Chi looked disdainfully at Chao Kuo, who was dissipating, and said, oh, this young master has heard of it. When he first arrived, he was filled with righteous indignation and thought it was worth dying for the people of the world. Chi Ling said coldly, yes, after all, you don't have to stay in this underworld for thousands of years. Chi Chi doesn't want to waste any more time talking to Chi Ling, after all, this kid should have reached the realm of one Zen now and can pass the message for himself. Chi Ling knelt on both knees, supported the ground with both hands, and observed a few minutes of silence for Chao Kuo with his head down. Subsequently, Chi Ling spread out the Ten Thousand Demons Manual, with a somewhat disappointing expression, and looked down at Chi Chi from a high position, saying. So, what do you want me to do? It's very simple, very simple. Find my father Xiao Hao and tell him that his son has repented. There is no way to handle this matter. According to Qi Ling's view of right and wrong, as far as the evil deeds committed by Qi Qi are concerned, it is not an exaggeration to even remove bones and skin. Besides, Cheong Qi is still living well here, even though he suffers from hunger every day. Even if Qi Ling was willing to do it, he was powerless. After the battle with the Western Queen Mother Kunlun, Xiao Hao completely disappeared from the Three Realms. It's easy to say, if I see his elderly family in Kunlun Mountain, I will definitely help you bring them. Upon hearing Qi Ling's words, Qi Qi bit off one of his tiger wings and said, Kid, that's a good deal. I still have the power of plundering in my young master's wings, as a reward for the Qi family. It's broken. The people of the Qi family must act according to their words, and if they violate them, they will suffer the pain of scraping bones and flesh in the underworld. 
Qi Ling thought to himself, Grandfather, you have caused me so much trouble. Why do you make such a promise when you have nothing to do? But on her face, she still looked calm and composed. When Qi pressed his tiger palm seal, a red energy from the broken wing flowed into the Ten Thousand Demons manual. Poor Qi, I will keep your story in mind. But if I can't find the great god Xiaohao, then I can't be considered as breaking my promise. Qi Qi smiled eerily and said. Don't worry, it's something you won't meet in your lifetime. Your child, your grandson, will always meet. Besides, I can feel that you will soon see my father. Qi Ling doesn't want to have too much entanglement with Qi Qi, and currently the most important thing is to awaken the pony python. It is said that the python evolved from the most active section of the carotid artery in Pangu. It was born with the same lifespan as heaven and earth, with the same light as the sun and moon, and roamed freely between heaven and earth. Moreover, the horse python has a gentle nature. Whether it is a demon, a ghost, or a divine Buddha in the heavenly realm, it has its roots. Even now, many leaders of heavenly units are its disciples. At that time, the Styx River was much wider than it is now, once occupying the entire underworld and even spreading to the human realm. Among the three realms, except for the Pony Python, everyone is worried about this. The gods suddenly remembered that the Styx was the carotid artery of Pangu. In an instant, all the eyes of existence were fixed on the Pony Python, but the Pony Python was unwilling to return to the Styx River for the sake of the living. This was not because it was afraid of being washed away by the Styx River, but because it lost its freedom, which was far more painful than death. On a certain day, the five heavenly emperors set up a trap, and the divine emperor of the underworld ambushed him. With the joint efforts of countless demons and demons, he finally drove this selfish guy into the abyss, at the bottom of the Styx River. Pulling out the Changi sword means reducing the seal on the pony python, which carries great risks. However, in order to rescue the one, one must take out the Song God sword. Qi Ling summoned the white-haired Taoist again and said, Please, Master Daoling, give me another helping hand. Countless white lights condensed behind Zhang Daoling, gradually forming into brushes of dust. Qi Ling mobilized his divine power, hoping to awaken the pony python with the divine power of the Cloud Lord and the breath of Fushi. Thousands of brushes of dust hit the tightly closed eyes of the horse python, with a grandeur like a sonic boom emitted by a fighter jet. Qi Ling's eyes were not closed, staring straight at him, but there was still no response. After losing one wing, some of them limped and looked a bit sad. Kid, I forgot to tell you that the King of Tibet has been here once. King of Tibet. The guy who claims to swear not to become a Buddha. The Qi family has signed contracts with Taoist deities for generations, but she is not familiar with the Tibetan king. After speaking, Qi Qi walked to the side and fell asleep. Since that's the case, it must be the king of the land who did something to the python. Hypnosis. Maybe not, although I don't know how capable the Tibetan king is, no one can control his mind. Persuasion. It is not easy to make the python voluntarily fall asleep. It seems like I'm going to meet this Tibetan king. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Baigui Gambling House Chapter 1. Meeting an Old Friend. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10. Baigui Gambling House Chapter 1. Meeting an old friend after leaving the Styx River for a distance to the north, you can see the bustling ghost market. Compared to the human world, the ghost market in the underworld never stops day and night, and there will always be buyers and sellers staying here. The place where Qi Ling is currently located is one of the most prosperous ghost markets for the next year. Sanching Stone Park That's right, it's a park. Since the concept of the Three Live Stone became popular in the human world, countless new Three Live Stones have been erected within a radius of 30 miles, centered around the original Three Live Stone. The main customers here are young men and women who have lost their love, are unable to seek it, are single until death, and continue their relationship. 
Ghost vendors also sell mostly souvenirs for sightseeing in the underworld. Although they may say that these little things can bless the wearer to find true love in the next life, who remembers when they crossed the Naiha Bridge? It is said that 200 years ago, a young man named Zhang Heng purchased a three lives necklace from the same ghost dealer four times. The ghost dealer was worried about his conscience and told him about the causes and consequences, hoping that he would not be obsessed with it again. Unexpectedly, Zhang Heng was a dead brain. Not only did he not let go of it, but he also filed a lawsuit against him and brought him to the Yen Wang Palace. There was no right or wrong in this matter, and no one in the Ten Yen Wang Palace would pay attention to him. Seeing the collusion between the King of Hell and the ghost merchants, Zhang Heng lay in front of the Naiha Bridge, dissuading every ghost who was about to be reincarnated, and even instigating them to return to the mortal world to stay by the side of their loved ones. In the end, the King of Tibet couldn't bear to see it anymore, so he sent a rebuke to the governor of various ghost markets in the underworld. Because Rebuke's reputation for fairness and justice was recognized by everyone, Zhang Heng went to reincarnation after receiving Rebuke's promise. But in this world, where is the meeting between two people designed? Sometimes there must be in life, but when there is no time in life, do not force yourself to seek it. This handsome young man, come and take a look at my Mandarin duck sachet. Even if we can't be together in this life, I believe we can always meet in the next life. A ghost mother dot in dot law dressed as a matchmaker grabbed Chi Ling's elbow, carrying a basket full of sachets. It's just that this sachet has a gray thread, which is very unpleasant. Chi Ling awkwardly smiled and said, Thank you for your kindness. It's not necessary. I'm taking the liberty of asking for your advice. Do you know where the ghost market Lord Boo is currently located? The ghost grandmother nodded her face pale and pale, like white paper smeared with white toothpaste. Her teeth were black and wrinkled, and she hesitated to say, Lord Boo was just here. As for where he is now, the old woman can't remember clearly. After speaking, the ghost mother dot in dot law stared at Chi Ling's pocket with a hint of meaning and smirked. Chi Ling took a deep breath, and her smile was much more terrifying than in horror movies. It can only be said that major directors are still conservative. If you want to find the remote king of the land, you must establish a relationship with his acquaintances, and finding a refutation is inevitable. Therefore, Chi Ling sincerely gazed at the ghost mother dot in dot law, got close to her side, and wanted to use the beauty trick. Grandma, I'm new here and I don't have any money on me, but if you're willing to trust me, I'll definitely give you some paper money when I return to Yang. Upon hearing these words, the ghost mother dot in dot law looked up and down at Chi Ling, her eyes full of disgust, and said, Pooh! How unlucky! Kid, if you're a living person, I can still trust you once, Grandma. Why come to the ghost market if you don't have money? At this moment, Chi Ling realized that what San Qing had injected into his body was a transformation in talisman. No wonder the little blue bird said it couldn't go back alone. This transformation of the talisman is the most shameless and sinister way to keep the living in hell. If the owner of the talisman doesn't retract it, the living is no different from a lonely soul, neither accepted by the mortal world nor recognized by the underworld. But if you have stronger power than the master who transforms the talisman, you can force the talisman on your own. Qi Ling didn't know how long San Qing had lived, and it was even more foolish to understand her background. However, one of the ancestral teachings of the Qi family was that pessimism cannot change established facts. Qi Ling is not depressed. She knows that only by improving herself as soon as possible can she get rid of her current situation. Now it seems that this ghost woman is toasting, not eating, and being punished. If there is a big fuss in the ghost market, she may be taken to the Yen Luo Hall by the ghost messenger soon. It may not be impossible to find a refutation then. Qi Ling was about to take action when a delicate and slender man's hand grasped his grip and smiled, muttering. Master, don't come safely. Without looking back, Qi Ling knew that the person who came was Xie Bian, and surprisingly, her seamless dress as a man was exposed like this. 
Qi Ling withdrew his demonic power and lightly joked. Oh. I've never heard of the pubic region having weekends off. Fan Wujio didn't follow you today. Xie Bian's face kept smiling, looking very eerie. If it were any other face, Qi Ling wouldn't want to look too much, but unfortunately, he was an exceptionally delicate Xie Bian. Many times, Qi Ling even thought, if only Lao Xie were a girl, he and Fan Wujio would be a perfect match. Xie Bian covered his mouth with long sleeves, his eyes curved, and he smiled politely, even in the underworld, I wouldn't treat the employees like animal messengers. Besides, Xiao Hei and I are also in the leadership team. There will be new people to do the soul-wrenching things. Leadership Qi Ling suddenly remembered that this guy in front of him, who has been a civil servant for almost 2,000 years, dare not be said to be very wealthy. There is always money to buy intelligence, right? At the beginning, I did not inquire about the whereabouts of the refutation to the black and white impermanence, considering that awakening the pony python is the biggest taboo in the underworld. The less people know about this, the better, especially for black and white impermanence, which can directly contact the ten halls of hell. Just kidding, brother Xie, why bother thinking too much? I came to the next class in a hurry today and didn't bring any silver. I wonder if it's possible. Xie Bayan stopped smiling, but the corners of his mouth still showed a curved smile. As by Wu Chang, how could he not have noticed this Yin symbol? But Xie Bien did not have the habit of meddling, but frowned slightly and said with some embarrassment. If it were in the past, it would be all my wealth that could be handed over to the owner, but unfortunately, yesterday I just lost two thousand years of savings and now I am also worried about money. Boy, I can't tell this is still a gambling dog. Qi Ling glanced over and suddenly noticed that Xie Bien had a lot of silk thread tied to his right hand. When he looked up, he turned out to be a kite seller. Oh, thank you, you're already quite old. How come you're still suffering from this disease? Xie Bien pinched his hair and said with some embarrassment. Tomorrow is Xiao He's birthday on earth, and I want to give him a gift. The owner of this gift is the owner of the Hundred Ghosts Gambling House. What gift is worth two thousand years of salary? Qi Ling suddenly had a small idea, Brother Xie, if I help you get this thing, I wonder if Brother Xie can do me a favor. Xie Bai calmed down and quickly shook off the kite string in his hand. The owner of the small shop said it's okay, I will definitely do it. Qi Ling smiled slightly and said, I hope Brother Xie can recommend me to Mr. Bu. Is that all? How difficult is it? It's right now, I can take you to find him. Qi Ling looked into the distance and pretended to say deeply. However, no one should know about this matter, even if it's Fan Wujio. Xie Bien was a bit confused. Refuting to be in the underworld can be considered as having a great reputation, but what can we do if we meet once? I had to grit my teeth and say. This is easy to say, easy to say. At this moment, Qi Ling suddenly stood still and said in a gloomy tone, There's one more thing, Brother Xie. No matter what I do in the future, I just hope you don't see it. End of this chapter